Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our August 9th meeting. Um, this is a hybrid meeting. We're still testing some of the equipment, so we'll see how we make out today. Um, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Ask everyone to please turn your cell phones off or place them on vibrate so it doesn't disturb the meeting. And I'll remind Council of the Declaration of Pecuniary Interest if it arises and declare it now or declare it if something pops up later. Um, we have an introduction here. Uh, Bob, you're going to do an introduction for a new economic development officer. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Martin. Uh, Mayor Martin, we'll ask our, our new team member to come to the podium so the community can, uh, can see her. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce, uh, introduce uh, Sherry Gottschuk as our Economic Development Officer. Uh, Sherry comes to us uh, having been very active in our community, as you know, uh, most recently with uh, the Chamber of Commerce. Sherry brings great enthusiasm and lots of great ideas uh, to help us move forward. Uh, so we're very delighted to have her as part of our team. Thank welcome, you. Sherry. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Okay, and welcome, Sherry. I know you been on the job for a little bit right now and uh, lots of things on the go but uh, and today there's some exciting news too so um, you'll be a big part of that and working in the community thank you okay thank you thank you welcome aboard here thank you Paul. okay we'll move on to we have minutes here from the regular council meeting of june 21st the motion to accept those minutes or minutes councilor webb and deputy mayor Giroux. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, next we're going to move into committee of adjustment with uh, Deputy Mayor Giroux in the chair. All for motion. Um, okay. Councillor Webb and yeah. Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Martin. Good morning, Councillor. Members in the audience. I'll call this uh, committee of adjustment to meeting to order and remind members of the committee of the requirement to disclose any pecuniary interest in general nature thereof if the occasion arises. This public meeting is held under Section 445 of the Planning Act and its regulations. And I will now ask uh, Area, our uh, planning consultant, to provide uh, his report. Good morning, Council. Through to the committee, application A1322. For property owner Julio uh, Molina, having civic address of 49 Fire Route 22, which is zoned seasonal residential with a shoreline designation in the township's official plan. The property owner retained an agent. Her name is Lori Young. I'm sure she's actually on the call uh, currently. Um, the purpose of this minor variance application is to seek relief from section 4.37 of the township's official plan. Oh, sorry, uh, the uh, comprehensive zoning bylaw and section 11.21C. Um, to permit the construction of a 40.9 meter square, which is translated to 440 square foot single story addition towards the rear of the existing cottage. Um, this application will have the following effect. One, reducing the minimum required setback to the high water mark from 30 meters or uh, 100 feet um, to, to 9 meters or 30 feet, as well as reducing the minimum required front yard setback from 21.3 meters or 70 feet to 9 meters or 30 feet. The recommendation of this report is that minor variance application A1322 be approved with the following conditions, that the application or the development be completed in, a, in accordance with the site plan submitted, um, that any requisite approval be received by any applicable uh, approval authorities prior to the issuance of a building permit, that the development meet all Ontario Building Code uh, setback requirements for septic systems, um, that a 20-day appeal period lapse prior to the issuance of a building permit, and that a building permit be issued within 12 months of the approval of this application. Uh, as my report stipulates, the township has determined that the application meets all four tests of a minor variance, uh, as well as uh, in maintaining consistency with the provincial policy statement, as well as the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe. The reduced high watermark setback and pro, uh, front yard setbacks uh, reflect the existing non-compliant conditions. Uh, of the recreational or the existing recreational dwelling uh, on the subject property. Um, the application was circulated to all uh, applicable agencies, uh, Crow Valley Conservation being included, who provided uh, input on the application, sharing no concern. Um, therefore, this application is appropriate for council approval. And that uh, concludes my uh, my report. Well, thank you for that, Myra. Um, as you mentioned, the, uh, the actual uh, person is to look after this the applicant is probably online and there she is there 
and uh, you will have a uh, certainly get a chance to speak in a moment if you so please. Uh, so I will now ask: uh, Is there anyone present wishing to speak uh, in opposition of this application? Hearing none, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the application? Nothing to add. <clears throat> okay. Is there any questions or comments from the members of the committee? Yeah. No, I'll. Uh... Everything looks in order here, and I'd make a motion that we approve the uh, recommend go ahead with the recommendations here. All right, Mayor Martin has moved this. Uh, excuse me, <clears throat> this application forward. We have a seconder. Oh, we have another second motion. Are there any further discussions on the motion? Hearing none, I'll call the uh, question. All in favor? This motion is carried. Well, thank you very much for your time, and thank you very for your. Uh, your report this morning. Great stuff. I'll now take a motion to turn the meeting back over to Mayor Martin, Councillor Webb, Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? Thank you. Please back over to us there. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Drill. Um, okay, so we're going to move into some planning reports. Are you? You're going to be on the hot seat here for a little while here by the looks of it. So Go ahead with your report, the first report. Through to your mayor and council. Uh, the purpose of this report is to seek approval for uh, a merger agreement. Uh, the, the site plan attached was, uh, was requested, so it's up on the screen. <laughs> um, uh, the merger agreement pertaining to the property identified as 391 uh, Island 38, which is lot 15, concession six in the Methune Ward. Um, as identified uh, as a condition of a consent to sever for application B4920 uh, and B5020. The recommendation of this report is that uh, the mayor and clerk be authorized to enter into a, a merger agreement with uh, the property owners Roger and Linda Bono uh, to merge the severed parcels with the abutting or separated lands uh, identified by property roll numbers 1531010005451000. Um, an illustration of which has been provided as an attachment to this report and it's up on the screen currently. Uh, just a little bit of background information in regards to this application. So the consent to sever applications uh, was recommended for approval by council on October 5th, 2020. Uh, Peterborough County Land Division um, issued uh, the attached notice of decision, which was attached to my report on April 1st, 2021. Um, in which uh, sever the severance was granted with uh, condition six, stipulating that the requirement of a merger agreement be uh, be fulfilled. Um, there are no financial impacts related to the approval of the merger uh, agreement applications, and, and all costs associated with this agreement are the responsibility of uh, the applicant. And that concludes my report. Okay, thank you. So it looks uh, like we're just cleaning some things up here. So has council got any uh, questions around this uh, item? If not, uh, I can read the uh, report and we can deal with it in the bylaw. I can read it. It's hard to see over the monitor. So, do you want to my... receive that report then? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, no. okay, moved by Deputy Mayor Joe that we received and uh, seconded by uh, Councillor Webb. All in favor? And that's carried. And we have the next report for Samson. Through to, you, Mayor, through to you, Mayor and Council, the severance application before Council is for the creation of a new lot. Application B6922, the applicant's names are Jamie and Ken Sampson. Uh, the purpose of this report is to obtain a, a recommendation uh, of Council to be submitted to the Peterborough County Land Division regarding uh, the consent of application. Uh, the recommendation of which is that uh, the Council advise Peterborough County Land Division that the township would endorse an application uh, or this application for consent um, the, the creation, for the creation of a new lot reference in the attached application. Um, pending the, uh, the following conditions that a uh, $1,000 uh, cash in lieu of parkland be paid, be paid to the municipality for the new lot being created, uh, that a septic system is achievable from Peterborough Public Health for the new lot, uh, that should uh, a property survey of the retained lot confirm any yard deficiencies, uh, that a minor variance can be achieved or will be required. 
um, that all requisite approvals be received from applicable uh, approval authorities uh, prior to the issuance of a building permit for the severed lot, and that the balance of this report be received. Uh, the consent proposal was, uh, was subject of a preliminary severance review completed by uh, Hero County uh, Planning Department on September I think it was September 1st of 2021. Um, as proposed, the consent uh, would have the effect of serving uh, or severing a portion of the retained parcel to, to create a new lot. Uh, the lot to be created is approximately 0 0.9 acres in, in space uh, with approximately 51 meters of frontage on Cash Block Lake. And the retained parcel is approximately 1.2 acres with approximately 52 uh, meters of frontage on Cash Lake. Uh, no new development is currently being proposed uh, on the severed lot. Um, based on the review of the uh, sub subject application together with all the uh, supporting material, it is the township's planning opinion that uh, the proposed uh, consent conforms to all the policies of the township's official plan, as well as the regulations stipulated in the township's uh, zoning bylaw. Uh, therefore, this application is considered endorsable. Um, and that concludes my report to council. Thank you, Arya. Um, yeah, we'll come to council. Is there any? Questions around this uh, report? Oh, I have one question. Perhaps, uh, excuse me again. <clears throat> Perhaps I didn't hear. I hear you uh, correct. Uh, in the portion where if I prove the lot to be created, several will com compromise, uh, be approximately 0 0.9 acres. And then the bottom of the third line is approximately, I have 57 meters. Did you say 57 or 51? So through to uh, through the mayor to you, uh, uh, Councillor Juro. So uh, the the new lot being created um, is, is zero point nine acres uh, in space uh, with approximately fifty one meters of frontage on Cash Lake, and then the retained parcel will be approximately one point two acres with fifty two meters of frontage on uh, on Cash Lake. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, then. so we do have a recommendation there. Uh, council's comfortable. I would move the recommendation. Okay, moved by Deputy Mayor Giro and seconded by Councillor Ellis. Did you have a question, Larry? You were muted, but I think you're okay. Just removing, you're seconding it. Yeah, second the motion, Mr. Mayor. Sorry. Okay, thank you. All in favor of the motion? And that's <clears throat> care. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right, we'll move into the third report here, or Bell. Through to you, Mayor and Council, the, the severance application before Council is for the creation of three new lots, applications B2422, 2522, and 2622. Uh, the applicants' names are Gary and Elaine Bell. I'm not sure if they're on the call currently at the moment. Uh, we can verify that later. Um, the purpose of this report is to provide background information regarding the proposed creation of new lots and to seek the requisite uh, direction of Council. So the, the recommendation here is that council determine whether or not the applications, uh, the subject applications conform to all relevant uh, uh, official plan policy prior to recommending approval or non-approval um, to Peterborough County Land Division, um, or that council defer these applications, thereby allowing an opportunity for the applicant to meet with township staff in order to consider all available options for severance of the subject property. Um, as well as the balance of this report be received. So just a little bit of background information pertaining to this file. Uh, the, the consent proposal was subject of a preliminary severance review completed by Peterborough County Land Division um, in, in June of 2021. If approved, the lots to be created will, uh, will comprise approximately nine acres of, of area um, uh, with, with 500 feet of frontage on Bansicle Road. That's for lot number one. Um, approximately 4.7 acres with 500 feet of frontage on Mansfield Road for Lot 2, and approximately 33 acres in area with 100 or 1,500 feet of frontage on Devil's Four Mile Road uh, for Lot Number 3. The parcel to be retained would comprise approximately of an area of 33, acre, uh, 33 acres together with 1,500 uh, uh, feet of frontage also on uh, Devil's Four Mile Road. The application or the applicants completed a natural heritage evaluation in support of the severance application. So the primary concern uh, from a planning perspective with regards to this application is conformity with the official plan policy, um, in particular 2.2.2.1G, uh, which stipulates that except uh, in, in accordance with the policies of section 2.15 of this plan, all lots created by consent, uh, as well as the retained lot, 
uh, shall front on and have access from a public road which is maintained year round um, and which is of a reasonable standard of construction. Uh, attached to my report was Appendix B, uh, which was provided to Council. Um, Appendix B was actually provided to the Township prior uh, to from the Public Works Department, which clearly indicates that Devil's Four Mile is not a year-round uh, maintained road and is not maintained during the winter. Um, while two of the proposed lot creations maintain frontage on Vansicle Road, which is Lot 1 and 2, uh, the creation of Lot 3 as well as the retained lot will mainly uh, provide frontage solely on, uh, on Devil's Four Mile Road. Therefore, at present, it is a township planning opinion that the proposed severance application contravenes uh, the, the applicable section of the official plan and does not maintain the spirit and intent of the plan. Having said that, uh, council currently has three options. One is to, you know, uh, despite the, 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 the contravention of the official plan policy, approve the application with the uh, uh, conditions in, in the later stages of my report uh, or the latter stages of my report. Uh, the, the second option would be to, to, to not approve the application as it contravenes the official plan policy. Or option number three, which is the recommendation of my personal recommendation, is that council defer this application and have the uh, applicants come in and meet with township staff to determine what would be a feasible scenario moving forward with these applications. I am more than happy to facilitate this meeting, and I think it's already you know uh, pretty much set in stone. We just need council's direction. Um, and that concludes my report. Okay, so yeah, that's something that's it's starting to pop up more and more, and I think it's something we got to be aware of with the, the private road frontage or the township road frontage. So, um, I personally like your last recommendation there as far as defer it and try and work with the applicant, but uh, it's up to council here. What's your thoughts? Yeah. Okay, moved by Councillor Pomeroy, then we defer this application for staff to work with the applicant, and seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor of the, and that's carried. Okay. All right. So the last report you have here, uh, Aria, is for Philip. Yes. Through to you, Mayor and Council. I was actually, interestingly enough, I was notified by the agent of the applicants that they have withdrawn their application. Um, uh, I was notified late last uh, yesterday. Uh, therefore, there is no need to discuss this agenda item for today's uh, for today's meeting. Okay. All right, I'm excited. So, all right then. So, thank you, Aria. That's the end of your reports here for this part of the meeting. We're gonna move into delegation, and this is probably the best report I've seen in a long time. So, welcome, Bill um, from Lead Architect, and uh, maybe you can come up to the podium and get into the report. Exciting news. And learn and counsel, great to be back. Um, I'm going to put uh, the deputy clerk to work here. We've got lots of slides. <laughs> and, uh, so uh, looking forward uh, to going through this. And interesting, here we are wearing sweaters today after <laughs> the weather that we've had. <laughs> so um, the, uh, it speaks to the weather and the resiliency that we need as far as our climate is concerned. Uh, so as far as an agenda for today, uh, you can see here, and I, I understand that you've got a large agenda yourselves, um, uh, so I'll try and keep this as, as, uh, as um, concise as possible. Um, there, there, there's a lot of information here, um, and happy to take any questions um, at, the, uh, at the end of the presentation. So um, a little bit about the project objectives, um, uh, opportunities that we see, um, the community engagement itself that we're proposing, and some of the project timelines as well. Uh, so if we go to project objectives, look at that, the slides are there. I don't even have to say that. Um, we see a really big opportunity here. So the first piece is what we're calling building back better, enhancing your community services and growing the economy. And where we start um, when we when we start to think about community engagement, next slide, is with your official plan. So the official plan of the municipality says the township will promote uh, will be promoted as an economic development and tourism destination, a caring community, community building. Uh, bridging past and present, working together, making dreams come true. Next slide. And I think it was actually kind of interesting that we met Sherry earlier, so that's all feeds into this. Um, so the vision of the official plan um, 
uh, includes growth in infrastructure, economy, uh, the rural area, and the natural environment of the lakes. Those are the principles. I'm not going to go into all of this in detail. And, um, and then finally, we've pulled sustainability out um, because we think this is very important. So um, your official plan speaks to the environment, economy, and the socio-cultural um, fabric as well. Next slide. And so it's about making dreams come true. And next slide. We do see this as the perfect storm of opportunity. I can't uh, stress enough that um, you are in a really unique situation. Um, we work with a lot of municipalities across uh, across the province of Ontario, and uh, we think you've got some great opportunities. Next slide. So you've already laid the groundwork um, for the future of a vibrant village and community. Uh, the purchase of the County Road 46 property um, was undertaken. Uh, the community center uh, building condition assessment, the recreation master plan, accessibility study, uh, securing the $5 million ICIP grant to 2020. That is an amazing groundwork. Um, you've recognized that um, community is, is about more than just roads, bridges, and waters. It's about um, community services. And um, they really start, the analogy that I use is, is the flywheel. If you picture this, this heavy, heavy, flywheel and you start pushing it ever so slowly, which is what you you all have been doing, it, it gains momentum. And, and you're at the point now where this flywheel has its own momentum. And um, uh, these projects are really multi-generational. They're servicing the youth, families, seniors, um, and culturally and recreational enriching. So um, uh, now that the groundwork's been laid, we can plant the seeds. And that's a common theme throughout this presentation. And I'll, I'll continue to talk about that. I should, I should note that um, Janet Stewart, my colleague, um, was going to make this presentation today. And the idea of the seeds was hers. Um, and I think it's a lovely, lovely analogy. Unfortunately, she, she couldn't make it due to personal, uh, personal situation. But I'm um, happy to do the presentation on her behalf. Um, so when we think about um, the, and the funding that we can tap into, um, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities has the Green Municipal Fund and many other programs offering financial grants. And these all wrap around the sustainability lens. Um, and I think given that that's in your, uh, your official plan, it's, it's, it's really important um, to look at these. And they really have net zero targets. Um, what's important for you to understand as a council is that um, the, the net zero requirements for municipalities will become law by 2050. And so, so what the government, uh, the provincial government, the federal governments are trying to do now is provide municipalities with the opportunity to take advantage of grants, to bring their infrastructure um, up to the requirements that, that you're going to have to have um, in that time frame. So now, that's why now is really the perfect storm of opportunities. And we're taking advantage of these grants across the province. Next slide. So the opportunities um, are the multi-generational impact that we talked about, um, how we can deal with climate impacts, and that also involves resiliency as well. Um, access to funding for, as the uh, um, uh, Green Municipal Fund says, trans transformational municipal infrastructure projects, um, aligning services with population growth, and um, I think one of the most important pieces is attracting the investment to grow the economy. Um, that's really important. These projects are pivotal for our projects that have that opportunity. Next slide. So when we look at the projects and outcome, you have the community center renewal and expansion projects, which will enhance access to sports, recreational opportunities, and aid emergency management. Then there's the new municipal offices and the public works facility on the same site, promoting a strong sense of culture and heritage and enhancing the provision of public services and emergency management. And then, of course, the uh, the 128 resident long term care facility, allowing residents to remain in the community. Um, next slide. Thank you. Oh, look at there. It's already there. <laughs> um, when you look at this geographically, it creates a uh, a really interesting triangle that shows how these projects anchor the community and and really add um, add strength to these various geographical areas of the community. So, community services in the northwest, community recreation in the northeast, and community living in the south. Uh, so, on the community center upgrades and expansion, I'm not going to go through all of this list. Um, the, the upgrades are from the, the report that was completed. The program development is from your recreational master plan. Next slide. 
the new municipal offices. Um, we need to do some work here. This will need to be subject to a study to determine the highest and best use for this particular building. And then the program for new, new, the new municipal offices really needs to be established. Um, we see this, uh, this project as a gateway to the north, an opportunity for emergency management. We know that um, we're going to be dealing with more climate uh, um, scenarios in the future and emergency management is going to become more important. I can tell you right now, we're working on two emergency operations centers and other municipalities, both of which have come online since, uh, since the May storms um, with their understanding of what needs to happen. Um, the offices and community meeting rooms, multi-purpose space, um, potential for a library or a heritage museum, uh, community kitchen. We recently just did this in the town of Innisfil um, on their municipal campus. We created a community kitchen space, um, public square, extended trail systems, the public works facility, obviously the offices, works depot, storage garage as well. Next slide. Uh, the long-term care. Um, this allows for the residents to stay in the community. It creates jobs. Um, it, it attracts commercial investment. Uh, for the master planning that um, we are looking at, um, uh, the site for the long-term care home is larger than it needs to be. There's potential from a planning standpoint to, to look at that um, to, to meet some of your recreational needs as well, um, and the potential for medical office and clinic um, in that uh, geographical location as well. So if we if we look at the funding itself, um, so you have the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program grant in place at $5 million. Um, but uh, next slide. As I said earlier, um, all buildings were going to be mandated to meet sustainable requirements in 2050. Um, so you should take advantage of the grants available um, to the new sustainable development now to help future-proof your buildings. These are civic buildings. They should be lasting longer than, uh, than this time frame. And so uh, future-proofing is something that um, all municipalities are looking at uh, with that. And so just to go through some of the opportunities, if we go to the next slide, um, these are all through uh, FCM. Uh, so the first is what's called the Signature Initiative um, Grant. This is brand new as of a few months ago. And, uh, and this particular is, uh, grant is for transformative best-in-class municipal projects. So a really great opportunity to try and sell these projects uh, under this particular grant. Uh, next slide. Um, the next is for new construction. And uh, we're certainly taking advantage of this in other municipalities uh, locally. Um, we're taking advantage of this grant for the new fire station number two for the city of Peterborough. Next slide. Um, uh, new construction of energy efficient municipal facility study work. So um, there are grants available for studies. Um, we have yeah. taken advantage of that as well and, uh, and see an opportunity um, for you uh, with that respect. Um, and that's up to a maximum of $175,000. Slide. And then there's retrofit as well. So um, uh, when we look at um, the uh, rec center, the renovation portion of that could fall under the retrofit piece um, under FCM. And then lastly, we have brownfield sites. Um, so some, some more due diligence needs to be done on, uh, on the uh, municipal and public works site, but um, uh, there is opportunity uh, for, uh, for grants and low interest loans for brownfield work as well. So um, lots available through, uh, through FCM. Next slide. Okay, the community engagement piece. Uh, so what we'd like to talk about is um, the engagement cycle, uh, background and survey, and then what we're calling a team's approach. And uh, I'm really looking forward to talking about this actually. Um, so if we go to the next slide, um, the engagement cycle is, um, and should be a continuous part of your policy cycle. Um, and so really what uh, the way we've laid this out is that um, what we wanna do first is formulate the message and that's what we're doing here right now. Um, then we wanna forge the communications uh, channels and then facilitate the conversation. And that is a continuous mindset that happens throughout projects. Uh, if we look at the community center, the message, um, in, in our minds is about building upgrades, accessibility upgrades, uh, the facility and program expansion, the recreation master plan, um, the potential for solar PV and sustainability, 
uh, enhancement of emergency management um, and the opportunity to have government funding for this project. So the channels um, that we're looking at for this engagement are the Township website, a Facebook project homepage, the community center display, and um, group canvassing um, in the community as well. And then under facilitation, how we would do this is through a digital mail and survey, um, a town hall event, uh, community round tables. You've got all of these user groups that you can see here. Um, just underneath uh, Councillor Ellis there on the screen that, uh, that are involved in this project. And, um, and then a, what we're calling this leadership teams approach. Uh, so next slide, I'm not going to read this. I, I understand that this has been circulated um, to everyone, but uh, this would be the backgrounder that goes out to the community. Um, and speaks to the reasons for, uh, for the community center project. Um, we then have the next slide, the community center survey, which has a series of uh, 20 questions that we've developed that would become part of the community engagement. Next slide. And then I think what's important here um, is on the consult consultation and feedback that um, we'll also initiate um, uh, engagement with the uh, Indigenous communities. Um, we have a duty to consult, you have a duty to consult, and, um, and that's very important. Um, survey participants um, will not be asked to identify themselves in their responses, and um, uh, we'll start to develop, our team can start to develop the building programs um, based, on, uh, based on the results of the, uh, the community engagement, which will ultimately start to become meaningful renderings of what these buildings could be based on that, uh, that community feedback. Next slide. So just running through the message again for the Municipal Office and Public Works, expanded facilities and service, full accessibility, um, a unique identity. One of the great opportunities you have is this is if there's anything that speaks to civic architecture more than anything, it's your municipal offices. So the opportunity to create an identity municipally for Havelock, Belmont, and Thune. Um, the, the idea of this gateway to the north, um, it's, it's uh, the location of, of this facility is unique. And so how do we take advantage of that? Um, extending the trail system, uh, especially between the municipal facility and the community center, so that link from the northwest to the northeast and northeast to the northwest, uh, the opportunity for sustainability, the opportunity for emergency management, and the fact that, again, we can, uh, we can get government funding for, uh, for this project. Uh, so like the community center, um, the channels would be through the township website, its own Facebook project homepage, um, and potentially a municipal office display here. And the facilitation, again, um, similar to the last, would be digital mail and survey, a town hall event, community round tables, and um, this leadership team's approach, which I'll talk about later. So like the community center, we also have a backgrounder that would, uh, would, would form the, 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 uh, the communique to um, your constituents. We then have the survey document, um, in this case, uh, 14 questions um, that speaks to these, uh, these two projects. And then lastly, um, as far as the, um, the consultation again, um, this consultation is there. This is very similar to the, to the last and, um, and really just developing the project based on the feedback. Next slide. <laughs> But what we're finding, especially um, during COVID and, uh, and, and even now as things are opening up, that um, are we reaching all the stakeholders and, and having the opportunity to provide input? So, so we've been involved in, in a lot of um, virtual consultation in, in mailers, um, uh, providing um, surveys online. And what we found is that there has been a drastic change in the last three years that we're not getting the level of engagement from the community that any community that we have in the past. And, you know, I think um, everybody's tired and, uh, and as engaged as they probably feel they can be. So 
um, we've asked ourselves, is there something else that, that you can do? And one of the, the fabulous um, things that we find about your community is that it's a smaller community, you know your constituents. And so we're proposing something here that we, uh, we want you all to react to, um, to see if, uh, if maybe there's a way of engaging um, closer with the community and your constituents. Uh, next slide. So we're calling this the community leadership team approach. Um, it's what you do best as, as counselors um, to engage with your constituents. We're suggesting that there be five multi-generational teams um, uh, created that um, will then uh, facilitate discussions among uh, five community sectors um, over some type of engagement uh, period that we uh, establish. Um, we think this is really more inclusive. It's it's a it's a direct way of gaining information, um, and it also shows your support of your own community and fosters participation. So, um, what uh, what could that look like? So, if we go to the next slide, and and this is this is a germ of an idea, that, but we want to, we want to get your reaction to this. So, here are the five teams. Um, we're suggesting that there's a youth member, a community group member, a business owner, um, and a senior member on each team. Uh, next slide. Um, potentially, the teams could uh, do outreach to school, community groups, businesses, social media, and seniors. Next slide. And when we start to look at the various um, constituent groups within those categories, um, there's some really interesting opportunities to engage. So if we look at an example, um, the, on the next slide, um, teams can decide the types of engagement that they want and they think best suits their, their sector to encourage participation, whether that's a round table or meetings or interviews, canvassing. Um, one of the thoughts we had is this idea of an idea this bucket. And, uh, we did this years ago with Bradford, which also had a smaller community where we put buckets um, in various businesses around town and said, "We're you, you have a single pad arena and that's all you've ever had. We're looking at this very large new facility. Um, what do you think? And um, there were notepads um, beside the buckets and people could just write down their ideas and toss them in the buckets. And there was a time period that, that, that happened. And um, we got some, some interesting feedback from that. So, um, so that's a potential possibility here. Uh, and next slide. And, and so if, if in that case, one of the things we thought was, well, let's then uh, fill the buckets after they're done with seedlings and that can become part of the regeneration of the trail system in the local municipality so that it, uh, it does more than just community consultation. It becomes part of the community and a legacy project for the community as well. Um, so timelines. Let's talk about the community center first. Um, we wanted to show you what could happen um, if uh, we approach these projects aggressively. And uh, so um, the, uh, the roundtables could happen uh, this month and next if we, if we push. We can look at doing the programming or developing what the project really should be. Um, in the fall, um, starting to think about the design of the project uh, towards Christmas and uh, ultimately starting um, construction documents in, in uh, January of next year with occupancy in January 2025. On the municipal offices and public works, uh, very similar through to the start of construction documents with an occupancy in January 2026. And then the long-term care is time that is dependent on the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care, <laughs> or the Ministry of Long-Term Care actually. I'm old school. I've been working with them for so long now that they've pulled apart into two groups. So I have to keep remembering that. But um, uh, so potentially um, the RFP for builder operator could happen in uh, Q4 of this year. Um, uh, the programming that would form part of that RFP would happen in that time frame. The respondents would, um, uh, would be doing their work to respond to that RFP um, at, at the end of this year um, with potential award and, and occupancy um, for January uh, award in, uh, in early next year, construction documents through to 2024 and occupancy in, uh, in 2026. Um, so as far as next steps are concerned, there's a lot of due diligence that needs to be done. 
Um, so we're, we're already in the process working with, uh, with staff on, uh, on that due diligence, which is great. And some of that includes site investigation and, um, but, uh, then there's the community engagement. The programming is critical because the programming then forms the studies that would, uh, form part of the grant applications. Um, so there's the opportunity for funding for that study work, as well as, um, and uh, ultimately uh, receiving uh, receiving the grants. So um, I think I went as quickly as I possibly could. <laughs> we, we do really feel that this is a huge opportunity for your community. And like, this is super exciting. Um, and uh, uh, that's how um, we see next steps potentially happening for the, the community engagement and programming pieces for these projects. So thank you and all the questions. All right. Well, thank you, Bill. And uh, this is something from the start of the term, we, we went into it to try and get shovel ready projects. And this is a huge project that we were looking forward to and uh, um, worked really hard on it. And this was really nice to see it moving along. And uh, I really like the community engagement part of it. That's something that we always hear about that, uh, you know, try and do the best you can and it is a complicated thing to try and get everyone but uh you've laid out a lot of ideas here that uh, i think we could work with but uh, um yeah i this is really well done and you know exciting so i'll open it up to to your council here if you have any questions for bill um deputy mayor Drogo, go ahead maybe not so much a question but uh, uh, thank you bill for this this is uh, great stuff uh, well done I like your scenario about the flywheel. Um, I know sometimes uh, the community thinks that we were spinning our wheels, but we weren't. We were pushing the flywheel up to get to the point, all council members, and we're there. And we're just about there. So it, it, it's great, great news. And we're on our roll. We're going to see it through. I know council will. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Hey. Yeah, hard to yeah, just to echo the deputy mayor's comments. Um, thank, thank you for the presentation. I think it provides a lot of clarity um, to council and to the public as well in terms of what we've been trying to do here over the past few years. Um, we have been working hard. There is a plan for this community. You can see it right here. Um, thank you for laying it out so beautifully. Might be used in the next couple months, but um, yeah, uh, it's just nice to see the vision all put, like I said, in into a document like this. So as a, whether it be us council or the community can see where we're going with some timelines to it, right? So just, oh, someday you actually have months and, and years in terms of in most of those projects I see will be done probably within the next three to four years. So that's, as you said, things are changing. Yeah, so thank you. Okay, Eric, go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Bill. I uh, appreciate this report. The uh, I like the timelines aspect of it um, because everything else we've uh, we do a bit here and we do a bit there. The program is laid out, and hopefully we can follow the timelines. And uh, I know there will be some pitfalls; there always is, but it's something. It's a guide. Thank you. Okay, so moving forward. Uh, the one part is to receive the report, something I would like to see, and I just want to make sure it was okay. Um, we normally share our uh, um, the minutes of the meeting or whatever on social media and things like that, but I would really like to see this go up on our social media, just this report itself and the slideshow. I think it's good information for the public that maybe doesn't watch the meetings, but they maybe look at uh, Twitter or Facebook or whatever other method we have or on our website. Um, it would be nice to uh, to get it up there and let people really read this and see the plan ahead because uh, communication is our biggest problem. And this here explains it really well of, of the plan. So um, once we get into the to the meetings with our groups, uh, which I never really asked, but I do like that approach. Um, a lot of council knows the community and knows the best way to contact different groups. And we all have different I guess people that we talk to, we all have different friends or uh, um, contacts. And I think if we each take a little piece of it, we should hit most of the people. We still won't hit everyone, but uh, um, I think, you know, as far as the timelines there of getting it done, you know, before November, that'll be up to council, I guess. So uh, we can discuss that later, but uh, um, 
know, it is a that time of year where some of these things might get a little complicated to try and follow through, but I'm glad this is out now and shows what council's been up to for the past few years and uh, um, and shows the vision that we had and you, you, you showed it well. So, um, but thank you for that. And uh, if there's no other questions, I don't see Councillor Ellis on the screen. So um, I'll look for a motion to receive the delegation. Uh, moved by Councillor Webb and seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? And that's carried. And I just wonder, is that okay if we post this on social media? Uh, Mayor Martin would happy be happy to work with staff to to put this in a format that works best for social media. Absolutely. Perfect. Okay. And it's a public document. Right yeah. Now, so it's, yeah. Uh, it's uh, so that's uh, uh, as long as uh, as long as we can make it as accessible as possible. I think uh, great. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Well, thanks, Bill, and look forward to seeing you again. Thanks very much. <laughs> All right, so we, we have some staff reports for information here. Are there any questions? Uh, we have uh, building activity uh, report for June. Questions around that? Okay, um, fire incidents reports. Uh, there's three of them there. Any questions around them? Okay, a report from uh, Parks and Rec around a, a grant that came forward. Uh, any questions around that? Okay. And we have a uh, CAO report with regards to closed session meetings. If there's no questions around them. I'll look for a motion to receive them. And uh, I do you want to make a motion? Motion to receive. Mr. Mayor. Okay, moved by uh, Deputy Mayor Gerald to receive the reports uh, for information. Seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, so we move into uh, reports for follow up action. And the first report here is the uh, RFP that went out for George Street and County Road 48 or. or George Street there on the corner of Oak and Taylor. Uh, oh no, sorry, this is the uh I'm sorry for you, Mayor Martin. First yeah. report is cloud permit. Yeah. Oh. Okay, sorry. Stop down so far. All right, Travis, uh you have a report on here with regards to cloud permit application. Yes, yeah, so um good morning, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Um, just a couple items that are, that are in here. So cloud permit is a, a software that's becoming more common in all municipalities. Um, we're looking at joining with them for both building and planning modules. It's my understanding that the, the township of Pavlok Don was part of the modernization and efficiency funding with the county to move forward with the planning module as part of the county as well. And the building permit software is is more common. It's 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 really good. It's um, it allows somebody to submit their applications at any time from home, see the, the notes the minute we put them in, they get a, an email notification as well. And it's becoming the way of the future. So there's some fees laid out there as well. That's going to cost the module is about $6,000 a year for building, $5,000 for planning, with the first year being shared with the county implementation fee for the building module they've agreed to waive that thousand dollars the implementation fee for the planning module will be shared through the county and it's um, right now it's set at two thousand six hundred and twenty five dollars and that'll be split between the municipalities that join last talk with tammy sigma she thought there was probably at least one more municipality that was going to join maybe two for sure so that'd be split two or three ways. Um, one other item that I've been talking with Paul at Cloud for a bit about was the integration with, with Keystone. He said typically that's a $3,000 integration fee, but he's agreed to waive that as well. And I guess one other note I'd like to bring to council's attention is it will change the number of permits you see in our monthly reports. So right now when we're issuing, say, a, a permit for a dwelling, the way it's being issued now, they're issuing a permit for a dwelling 
a plumbing permit. If there's an attached garage, that's a separate permit. If there's a covered porch, that's a separate permit. And if there's a deck, that's a separate permit. So when they apply online, we won't be making them apply for five separate permits. It'll show us one. So the numbers will change, but it'll be the same amount of work. Okay. Right then. So yeah, it's, it's, you're familiar with this and it's the way to go is from we what I hear. For you, we use it in uh, North Kawartha and it's it's very good. I mean, it's got a few little glitches, but everything does as it comes out and they're, they're continuously updating it and correcting things to make it better all the time. And their, um, like their IT support, uh, we used um, was Vivic in North Kawartha. It's Vivic that's been looking after the county as well with the eight, eight municipalities here. And it's my understanding he'll be our IT guy and he was super too. He would respond almost immediately to questions. All right. Council Webb, you have yeah, just um so what's the, the cost? Like I got a couple numbers here. Yeah, so the cost, it's a five-year contract oh. at six thousand a year for the building module, mm -hmm. five thousand for the planning module. Each year? Each year. So that's eleven per year. Eleven per year. And but you said we're sharing it with so the inter the um implementation fee is shared. That's those 11. are our those are our costs per year, the six and the five. Eleven. 11 yeah. hard. Okay. And the year 2022 would be prorated. Okay. So going forward, that would be our fees per year. And then it would be my recommendation that through the budget process, we review our building and planning fees to try and recover costs. Thank you, Travis. Hey, Bob. And, and through you, Mayor Martin, just to add uh, to the comments of the chief building official, it is my understanding from the townships that have used. Um, uh, permit that it was very well received by the public and people appreciated the opportunity okay, keep to do things online. So, okay. Is there any other questions for Travis? Uh, Deputy Mayor Jarrell, go ahead. Maybe not a question, but a thank you for Travis for this. Uh, we found out, I think, when COVID hit us, our lives have changed. We can't, we can't any longer just stand still or we're playing catch up all the time. I think this is a fabulous tool. It costs money, but that's life today. So uh, yeah, I'm certainly willing to support this. And uh, thanks for bringing it forward, Travis. It's going to make everybody's lives a lot easier, I think. I'll move it. Okay. So you moved by Deputy Mayor Jerome and seconded by Councillor Webb. Any other questions around this or comments? Seeing none, all in favor. And that's carried. Okay, thank thanks, you, Travis. Thank you. All right, our next report here is with regard to the portable electronic sign at the Pete sign. Peter? Yes, good morning. Yes, good morning, Mayor Martin and members of council. Uh, the first report here is, uh, is an information report to provide council um, with uh, so, uh, information on the portable electric speed signs. Uh, I just want to elaborate a little bit on the recommendation. Um, uh, I contacted two different companies, uh, Cedar Signs, um, and the request was for a portable. Uh, so you can see in the description, um, there is the price and then the price uh, of the trailer and the shipping. And in the, uh, the Calitech um, uh, uh, estimate, uh, there was no trailer included. So it was just the, it's just the sign itself. Um, they all come equipped with, uh, with solar panels, batteries. Uh, we just have to install them. Um, with the cedar signs, uh, the trailer does come separate from a different uh, a different source, uh, so it does require some um, installation uh, when it when it gets to the township. Uh, but it's uh, from what I understand, it's a plug and play and, and a few bolts to assemble, so it's uh, it's pretty uh, user friendly. Okay, so um, yeah, this was discussed at uh, police service board too, and and we keep hearing it throughout the community about. Uh, speed being a problem and and this is one way to help address it or try and slow some things down um do these signs uh do a recording too as far as uh pick up uh not photos necessarily but a um what's going on on certain roads kind of like the black cat does where it uh, records a if there's a consistent speeder at a certain time it helps police uh pick a location to go and watch. Do these do that sort of thing too? 
Uh, through you, Mayor Martin. No, I don't. I do not believe they do that. But they, uh, okay. uh, depending on which sign company, um, one does have uh, custom messaging, and the other has uh, a basic five uh, standard messages: uh, flashes, uh, slow down, uh, you know, etc. So, uh, but no, they do not record. Um, they pick up vehicles approximately three hundred meters away from the sign uh, as a, as the vehicle approaches. Okay, and the last time that we did this, we did um, pick up some of the costs through uh, um, criminal record checks and things like that, that we get money back at the end of the year from policing. Um, I guess that's what we would investigate on next is how we would pay for this, Bob. Um, what's your, we don't have anything there on where it would come from or? Uh, this is, sorry, go ahead. The manager called the courts. Go ahead. Uh, through you, yes, through you, Mayor Martin, I did speak to our uh, acting treasurer, David Vaughn, uh, about this uh, previously to the meeting. Uh, he might have some insight if council proceed, wishes to proceed uh, uh, today um, to go ahead. Okay, I'll open up. Go ahead, uh, Council Pomeroy, and then <clears throat> Deputy Mayor Drew. Yeah, could uh, we get some more information on some of the questions that Jim asked on the start there? Like, it's pretty much drawn to the end of the year right now for for picking up speeders, but there's a few unanswered questions on, you know, whether it's recorded or whatever. And uh, have some more information back from, from these two companies. I know one's Cedar and the other one's Calitech. Well, and there's quite a discrepancy in the price too. So, so were these the companies that you talked to at uh, Good Roads? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And uh, you know, like you know, Calitech they wanted twenty two hundred and five dollars for to for to ship it, and there was no uh, no shipping on the other one. Or that was, yeah. Yes, three, three. No, that was three. that was cedar. Okay, okay. Go ahead, Peter. Yes, excuse me. Yes, uh, three, Mayor Martin. Uh, uh, the the twenty two hundred and five dollars for the shipping that was including the trailer being shipped as well. Uh, so I, I don't uh, as as I didn't get an actual shipping price on just the signs. Um, uh, we were trying to get a price on a portable moving sign with the trailer. Um, so I could go back to Cedar Signs and get uh, a price. Uh, just with the actual sign excluded the trailer with the shipping. Uh, uh, the both signs, both companies are are the same size, 15 inch. Uh, the cedar uh, the cedar sign company does have one 18 inch. Uh, it is a little bit bigger. Um, the only difference I could see with between the two signs, uh, the one for cedar signs was three inches bigger, uh, and the 15 inch sign from Calitech. Uh, uh, the premium uh, with a little bit more money at forty nine hundred dollars. Uh, it had an extra year warranty, which made it three years instead of the two years, and uh, a higher intensity um, of the actual sign itself. That was the difference uh, between the two signs, uh, the two companies. Uh, so they're both two years, and the extra year uh, with Calitech with their premium sign <clears throat> and a higher intensity. Okay. All right, uh, Deputy Mayor Joy, you had a question? I think Peter answered, I'm sure you were Martin. I think Peter answered my question. My question was the warranty. Or warranty. So I think he answered that. So I think it's something, you know, we've talked about it over and over, and it is something that we want to move ahead with. I just think we need a little more information before we can nail it down. So uh, um, it's good information, Peter. And uh, uh, Councillor Ellis, go ahead. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I apologize for not having all the pertinent information uh, that's shared with council. For where I am, I, I don't have that. Um, I'd like to see, uh, I'd like to see council make a decision here and carry on. Uh, we got the better part of August, September. We have um, usually October is a busy month sometimes. Uh, because of the roads that we're probably going to utilize this on, uh, cottage country. Um, I think Peter has given us all the information we need. We just got to make a decision whether we go with which company 
the larger versus a smaller sign. I like the idea of uh, the programmable ones where you, got, you put the message there. If, if you recall driving someplace and a message flashes at you, it catches your attention. Um, I just think we need to make a decision here and get Peter to get them ordered and let's get them in place for the balance of the summer. Okay. All right. I'd, so I'd look to CAO Bob here to, uh, is there a way of creating a motion here that uh, we would give direction up to a certain limit and let staff move ahead with uh, some of the things that have been asked here? Uh, I don't know what your thoughts are. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Pomeroy speaking. Okay, go ahead, Barry. Uh, first of all, I'd like to, like Peter, to find out some more answers here uh, on the sign and the final figure, you know, on, on both signs. I know I've, I've got it down here, but um, there's some questions, you know, that have come up, like Jim has asked there, if there's anything that uh, can be kept for, for proof of, 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 of uh, speed or, or does it take a camera, you know, does it, record the same as the black cat or whatever. But anyway, can you find out the questions on this, Peter, and then bring it back? Because I know we, we want it. We've done been without it, but I still think it's a it's a snap decision when we don't even, don't even have it in our budget. Okay. Uh, Did you have something? I had one question to you, Peter, can you go over the size of the sign again for me? Did you say it was the actual sign visible that was was only 15 inches? Yes, through you, through you, Mayor Martin. Yes, that's correct. So the, the screen itself is what is the what they're saying, like you're 15 inches or 18 inches, and they both seem to be a standard 15. It's just the cedar signs that, that has one larger at 18 inches. Uh, the reason I ask, for instance, if you go down the hill in Marmor going before you go across the uh, Crow River there, there's a sign there that flashes at you and tells you your speed and so on. Um, it looks a lot bigger than that. Perhaps it isn't. Perhaps it's only 18 inches, but it's certainly clear. And uh, if they pick it up at, what did you say, 300 yards, 300 meters? Um, it must be pretty visible. It was just a question, not so Peter. Thank you. So Bob, maybe there's a way of, uh, if this came back to the September meeting, is that, uh, that we're interested or maybe, and it sounds like the bigger sign and the uh, uh, programmable side of it was, maybe if we could get a cost of what it is and what exactly that one model is, maybe we could make a decision then if we know, you know focus on one of these. And, and the trailer too was. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you want Larry to go and then you can Yeah, please. We'll let Councillor okay, Ellis. Councillor Ellis, go ahead. Yeah, through Mr. Mayor, uh, I asked Peter, you have what it would cost for the larger sign, the programmable sign, and a trailer. Do you have that cost with you? Uh, yes, I do. Um, it's, uh, I, I haven't got it added up here, but uh, this, the cost of the larger sign uh, is 45 hundred and ninety nine dollars uh the trailer is thirty five hundred and ninety nine dollars and the uh, uh charge and shipping uh is twenty two hundred and five dollars so that is the one large sign the 18 inch sign uh which is uh, the custom messaging uh two-year warranty it has the trailer and the shipping included so i yeah i don't have the number added up and i should have i'm sorry about that it's okay. It gives us a rough idea. And you spoke, uh, Dave Vaughn, as uh, you spoke to Dave about where we would uh, get the money to pay for it. Yes, that's that's right, Councillor Ellis. Uh, David had uh, had, I believe, had some uh, some funds there available for this. If David's okay. available, is, maybe he could speak. Um, is yeah, and Bob was going to comment here too. Yeah, through you, Mayor Martin. Uh, Based on the conversation I'm hearing, council's not prepared to, to make a final decision today. So I would suggest that you could move a motion 
that approves the purchase to a maximum of $15,000, which would cover, sounds like the cost that Peter has uh, run through, uh, with a report to be brought back in September with the details of the questions that have been asked and a final determination of where the money would come from. Is that what the number was? I'm yeah. approximating based on the ad, the math that he has. 10-4. Ten, 10-4 four. Ten, four plus tax. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Barry, go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, Calitech was, uh, oh, their shipping was only $295 compared to $2205 from Cedar. And then uh, the trailer <clears throat> for Cedar was $3,600, $3,599 or something. So Calitech, to me, there, you know, there's what, $1,300 difference right there. We we got to look. Don't just say, "Well, we're going to order from Cedar," because we can get a trailer. I'm sure um, we could go to Peterborough and buy a trailer. So for less than thirty six hundred dollars. I think what Bob proposed though was just we wouldn't pick anybody. We need that. Yeah. We just set the the limit, right? I'll get so, some more right. more information. Yeah, and but he's got a number to work with there and uh, bring back an information uh, with a recommendation at the next meeting. Um, that way it's still moving, Larry. Um, okay, go ahead, Larry. Yeah, through your, um, I, I believe a few years back, uh, community policing used to have a sign that was placed out in different areas that sat on a trailer. I don't know whether that would be sufficient or if it's available, but it might be something looking into. Yeah, we borrowed that. I think it was from Lakefield, uh, but now most municipalities have their own. So um, okay. we could look into that in the meantime, I think. But uh, um, for now, we're looking at getting our own sign and we just need a bit more detail here. But I think, uh, you know, we could put a motion forward to give staff direction for the next meeting to bring back the numbers and a, and a recommendation. They've heard what we're looking for. Um, you know, even the part about recording Maybe one of them does it. it. You know, it's hard to say. Some of them have that that in there, but at least we'll know exactly uh, what we're going to get, and uh, and we'll have a better plan on how we're going to pay for it. So, um, but right now, if we gave um, had a motion here to uh, up to fifteen thousand dollars, and uh, let staff work on that and bring it back for the first meeting in September, um, at least we're moving ahead. I gladly make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Okay, moved by Councillor Ellis that we uh, set a limit of $15,000 and get a report back for the next meeting. Seconder? Second the motion. Deputy Mayor Duro seconding that. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, thank you. Um, the next is uh, Culver replacement on Round Lake, Peter. Yes, through you, uh, Mayor Martin, to members of council. Uh, uh, the purpose of this report is to seek council's approval for the replacement of one large eight-foot culvert on Round Lake Road uh, with two five-foot culverts uh, prior to the proposed uh, road construction uh, for this uh, year of uh, 2022. Um, just a little little detail, uh, the, the eight-foot culvert um, is failed because there's not enough cover over top of the culvert to disperse the wheels and the weight of the vehicles and traffic going over. Uh, so it's just a little background history. So with the two five foot culverts uh, being put in place, uh, that way we'll have our cover and we don't have to build the road up and, uh, and encroach out into the wetlands. So uh, the two five foot culverts will handle the same flow as the eight foot culvert. And it's just a little uh, background information on why we're going with two instead of the one. So, okay, thank you, Peter. So we do have a recommendation there. What's council's thoughts? No, Councilor make Pomeroy. a motion. We approve the recommendation. Move by Councilor Pomeroy that we go with the recommendation and seconded by Councilor Webb. All in favor? And that's carried. A question, All Mr. Right. Mayor. Oh, go ahead, Larry. Uh, through you to uh, Peter. The requirement of two five-foot uh, culverts, that's an engineering requirement? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Uh, so we had DM Wills uh, do the engineering and consult consultation with uh, through municipal staff, as well as Crow Valley Conservation. 
and that uh, that was the recommended uh, the two five foot culverts will flow the same as one eight foot culvert. Just um, I'm just because I know the lay of the land there. I'm just wondering. Uh, I guess the two five foot culverts whether they re are required. There's not much water flow there other than early in the spring. Yeah, that was the reason for my question, Pete. Well, yes, through you, yes, through you, Mayor Martin. That is, uh, that's all done through the DM Wills Engineering uh, with all the hydraulic flows and uh, hundred-year flood, um, et cetera. That, yeah, they take all that into consideration in their evaluation, Councillor Ellis. Yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Peter. Okay. Um, so we did pass that, and all in favor? Carried. So. Anyways, uh, so we'll move on to the next report. And at DEMCON, our favorite, every year we get this with Highway 7 winter maintenance. It's amazing how it keeps climbing um, and we don't really have any say. So Barry likes this one. Go ahead, Councillor Palmer. Well, I'm not going to argue with it because the first thing they'll come back with is the fuel price. Yeah. So um, I'll make a motion that we uh, renew our contract. All right. That was pretty easy. Okay, so moved I'll by Councillor Palmer and seconded by Deputy Mayor Drew. Any questions around it? All in favor? And that's carried. All right, next is the uh, RFP where it started off, I guess. Like, anyway, it's George Street and, <laughs> and the uh, environmental assessment for George Street. Uh, um, so there's a recommendation here that uh, we move ahead with this. Um, What's council's thoughts? Another project that's long overdue and uh, finally getting there. So well, do you have anything to add to your... the recommendation, Mr. Mayor? Okay. Moved by uh, Councillor Ellis that we go with the recommendation here to get this environmental assessment going. I'd be happy to second that, Mr. Mayor. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Durrell. All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Thank you. <laughs> okay. The uh, next report here is with regards to our pickup trucks. Um, we had a RFP out for um, the trucks and uh, there's a recommendation here. Uh, what's council's thoughts here? Um, Deputy Mayor Giroux, go ahead. I'll, I'll speak to the uh, recommendation um, in the report. Um, I, don't, I don't want to read it. I don't want to read the whole recommendation, but in the report, it, it's asking for our manager of public works to be able to go out and secure two vehicles. Um, I'm in favor of that myself. I don't know what the rest of the council. The other part of the report is we did have a, a tender opening and uh, it was uh, in the meeting was uh, Peter, myself, uh, oh, Kayla and uh, Leah, and we opened a tender. Perhaps Peter can tell us about the two tenders. Um, one was from Blue Mountain and Chrysler, I believe, from up west. That it wasn't actually um, accepted because it wasn't. They didn't have a vehicle on the lot. The other one was from a local dealer, and the committee uh, that day. Naturally, we have to bring it back to council, but we didn't endorse it. We felt it was too much money. So, if Peter wants to add anything to that, he can. But. Uh, so as the person that was uh, there that day and opened the tender, uh, I agreed that uh, it, it wasn't feasible. It wasn't a good deal for the uh, for the taxpayers. So, okay. Peter has anything, Dad? He welcome to it this time. Peter, go ahead. Yeah, yes, through you, uh, Mayor Martin, to, to Deputy Mayor Giroux. Uh, yes, the uh, the one local dealer did have two vehicles on lot. Um, uh, the one uh, was a diesel, which is uh, substantially uh, more, and uh, the township really does not require uh, diesel uh, uh, for uh, for our three-quarter ton trucks. Um, at, at, 
I mean, we do not have a trailer to tow. Uh, it just uh, it just seems an excessive amount. That's something that we don't need to um, to spend. Um, as well as, uh, as staff feels, um, I think we would uh, profit better uh, selling our, our our used vehicles here through Gov deals. And uh, I think we'd have a little better return on those vehicles going that route. Um, so I think there's a, a fair substantial amount of money that is uh, that could be saved here. Um, okay. All right then. Is there any other questions? So, so the recommendation here, or the, the preference here, would be to uh, authorize two new trucks um, with avail with available inventory. Um, I'm just reading what's here, and then sell the used the, the used ones on Gov dealers. Terry, uh, go ahead. So, do we have to notify the the, the, the um, bidders would be bidder. notified? Yeah, I guess that, that the bid is not accepted, or I think that's how we're before we uh, go and start all over again. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's how it would work, Peter, is you would just notify that they weren't accepted. Yes, that's correct, Mayor Martin. And then we start the process of looking for what's available on a lot and um, and sell the other two on Gov deals. Um, what's council's thoughts? Yeah. Deputy Mayor Jerome, go ahead. Well, I have thanks to uh, Councilor Pomeroy for bringing that to our attention. And that can be done today, Peter. Uh, yes, we do. By the local dealer that, that that couldn't be done till today. I realize that. Um, uh, what was I going to say the the recommendation? I I agree with the recommendation. Um, as long as uh, I would take some advice from our CAO, this doesn't um, interfere with uh, any of our policies about procurement. Our uh, Single source. Uh, no, through you, Mayor Martin. So this would not be a single source. This is this is a uh, um, an examination of what's available, uh, basically throughout the province. Uh, there would be a report back indicating uh, what dealerships were approached and and examined. Uh, so this would be fully transparent. Okay, that's all I need to know. Okay. And and further to that, they have to uh, submit bids, quotes, if we do find two. No, through you, Mayor Martin. No, we will we will be shopping for a vehicle as you would shop for a vehicle. So we'll be looking to see what's out there and what's available on a lot. Uh, we will provide to council that information, and then a choice will be made. And it would have to be cheaper than what was provided. That's correct. Okay. What's council's thought? My thought is that when I go in and talk to a dealer, I can deal. It's not like asking for a price on it yet. So I would like to move the recommendation. Okay. So we do have a mover. Do we have a second? Second the motion, uh, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Um, Councillor Pomeroy, go ahead and speak to the motion. Well, I don't know. It's uh, or don't forget we're dealing with public money here too, eh? And uh, we've always requested tenders, enclosed tenders, but we all open. I mean, if we can find two or three people that have, can they put it in the in the in an envelope <laughs> as a, a sealed tender? I, I don't want you to just go see uh, the Sterling or Valble or something and buy a truck saying, oh, I, I think that's the best price. Well, okay. through, you, uh, through you, Mayor Martin, uh, shopping for a vehicle today is much different than it was a few years ago. Um, as we all know, the internet has opened up many more opportunities uh, for where to shop. Um, and the vehicles available to you. So we could essentially shop province-wide uh, to find the best deal. And I think that's the intention of the manager of Public Works. Uh, we will bring back uh, examples of what we found. All of these prices are public. Anybody can go online and find 
a truck if you want to buy one and you'll know what you're going to pay. So it is very transparent. We will bring back the listing of uh, those that were examined and everything uh, will be available to council and the public. So, okay, what is the question? Is it the $50,000 limit? Does it have to be put out to tender? If it's over 50. Does it have to be put out to tender if it's over 50? If it's over 50, yeah. uh, our policy does say it's to be put out to tender, which we did do. Okay. Um, so because we did it, we can do this right. now. Okay. Right, yeah. Oh, I just want yeah. to, right. yeah. the Councillor Pomeroy, because yep. we don't want to make this the, the way we go in the future, right? No, no. So I this think is this a one is a, I think a unique thing. thing. Okay. We need a truck. We're going to need these trucks yeah. this winter. And uh, um, we went one route and it didn't work. And the environment is different out there. Everybody, anybody that's looked at vehicles lately, there's not many around, so um, it is a different way of doing it, but uh, um, Peter knows what we were offered, and we feel that we can beat it and, and do better for the taxpayer. So it's, you know, this isn't going to be a habit. This is just something for the sign of the times right now and see how it works out. Um, so it's, so I do have a mover and a second here. If it makes it more palatable for council, I think it's quite clear that whatever it is, it's got to be less money than what we, I think we all realize that, but I want to make sure that that's quite clear that these trucks will be a considerable amount less than what we turned down. Yeah. So, <clears throat> Peter, Peter understands that, but I just want to make that clear. Okay. All right, so we have a mover and a seconder. If there's no other questions, I'll call the question, all in favor? And that's carried. Okay, so we'll look forward to that in the future here. Okay, the next item here is the uh, landscaping for the corner of Oak and uh, George Street. Um, Ryan, did you want to speak to this? Uh, good morning, Mayor Martin and members of council. Uh, the report uh, in front of you outlines uh, the process that we followed for uh, attracting la uh, landscape services uh, for the property on the corner of Oak and George. This is uh, a project that was carried forward from last year. Uh, we previously uh, posted this on our website and in the local newspaper in the Havelock Rail uh, for a period of seven weeks uh, to attract uh, local qualified bidders. Um, at the time of the, the bid closure, uh, the first round this year, uh, we didn't receive any submissions. So we reposted it on the bids and tenders website um, it closed on uh, July uh, 21st, and we did receive one submission. Uh, we reviewed the uh, submission, and um, uh, we found that it was in budget and it met the terms of the tender. Uh, that therefore, uh, staff is recommending that uh, that we proceed with uh, Kroger's construction to complete this project this year. They have indicated in their tender that they. Uh, can complete this work in September. Uh, so uh, it's staff's uh, opinion that if council wishes to proceed with this work and get this completed this year, that we uh, that we approve the report. Okay. So Deputy Mayor Drell, go ahead. Through you, uh, Mayor Martin. Um, Ryan, has there at any time been a, a sketch or a drawing of, uh, of what we're going to get this money? If there, if there has, and I, I apologize. But it's, it's kind of hard to make a decision on something that I really don't know what's going in on that piece of property. So through you, a conceptual sketch. You know. Through you, uh, Mayor Martin, to Deputy uh, Mayor Giroux. Yeah, I've, uh, last year I developed a, uh, a sketch or conceptual design. I was working with landscape designs. Uh, that, that was brought forward to council and it was approved last year. Um, and then uh, just more recently, we had the Norwood High School involved with uh, with the sketch as well. So council uh, has recently seen that sketch, but I'm, I'm happy to share that with you uh, if you need a copy of it. Well, my apologies. Uh, that's yes. one of the things that went over, over top of my head there. So thank you very much for bringing that up. And uh, that'll make it an uh, easier decision for me at least. And, uh, so that's so that's the property there, and uh, um, that was what they worked from. So uh, the elevation, uh, Ryan, if I could ask through you, Mr. Mayor, is the elevation going to change there? 
I mean, it's downhill quite a bit there. It's particularly like the last three quarters of the of the yeah, So through, through Mayor Marn to Deputy Mayor Giroux, um, the if you're looking from um, George Street, uh, where you can see the uh, where the pavers and the armor stone are going to go in, in the plantings, uh, that area will be built up a little bit. Um, but as for the rest, we'll basically be using like the natural grade, what's there. So we're not going to be really building it up a whole lot. We'll be stripping um, the gravel in there and adding topsoil and uh, and and making it more of a, a grass area on the uh, on the south side of the property. So okay. the grades are going to change a tremendous amount. All right, through you again, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for that, Ryan. Now that I see it, I remember I have a copy of it, but unfortunately, I didn't remember this morning. So thank you for that. So, and the one other thing there, those trees are a bigger tree than they're not, what do you call them, whips? They're, they're a substantial size of uh, trunk on the tree as part of the tender too. So, um, anyways, it's, uh, Councilor Palmer, go ahead. Yeah, I think I mentioned this before. Um, maybe there is somewhere, but a park bench. Yeah. You know, is there one on that sketch? Ryan? Through you, Mayor Martin, to Councillor Pomeroy, uh, there isn't a park bench um, currently within this design because um, we were looking at doing uh, this kind of in stages. So, if you look at the sketch where the where the dotted line is connecting from the back end of um, what you, the the circle there, where um, so around that circle, that's going to be armor stone. It'll also serve as um, as seating, um, but then in the future. You can see that um, we're looking at adding another walkway um, to connect it to the to lower part of the uh, of the property. So uh, we're considering doing like a memorial bench or something like that in the future. But uh, within this design, uh, we were pretty tight on budget this year, so uh, we didn't include that. But it's definitely something that we wanted to get uh, moving forward this year, and then and then build on top of it for next year. Maybe we can add some money in the budget. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I, I think, think that's something that we can climb the tree, some of our old people. <laughs> yeah. So I think that will be something, you know, we can work on. It does need, that was one of the things that we were hoping for a bench with uh, a plaque on it. So, but that can be worked into this, like you say, that path there. I think you said that path would be screenings for now until we, um, mm -hmm. until we move ahead um, with being able to finalize it. Um, but anyways, the, the concept is there and uh, um, that's what they bid on um, to build. So anyways, any questions, any more questions? So can I just, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so um, maybe the price of one tree I hope would more than substantiate a bench for people to sit on. Yeah, like it's, uh, you know, it would probably take a couple of trees or more. The bench you're looking at a thousand dollars, probably at least. What are so, you looking at for a tree? Not sure what they were individually, but they're they're uh, yeah. Like I think that's something that we can uh, um, work into it somehow, Ryan. As far as a bench, uh, um, like he's like Councillor Palmer is saying, if we have to, you know, give up something or whatever, um, I'm sure you can tweak the plans here to. To add, like even with the armor stone, um, I know Kobe had offered to uh, donate some stone. We might be able to save something there, actually, uh, um, if we went with their type of stone there. Um, when I talked to them, so there's. I'm, I think the main thing here is it's under budget, and and there's a plan here. And if we can uh, get going, um, I think it's to start in September here. So. Go ahead. So you, uh, Mr. Mayor, in, in regards to the bench, I think it's a, a great opportunity to put out to the public. We have some memorial benches throughout the village. Uh, this is another place where there's probably some people that like to have a memorial bench there. So it's been done in the past. And I think if the word was out, we wouldn't have much trouble getting a memorial bench in there, maybe more than one, that's for sure. So, okay. Yeah, just echo the Deputy Mayor and Councillor Pomeroy's uh, points. I think it'd be 
advantageous to have benches there if we're trying to promote this and get people to use it. We've got the bakery next door here that a lot of people come here for lunch and maybe would go over there, eat on the bench, whatnot, you know, Tim Hortons coffee or whatever. I would rather go with the benches before the trees. Like we want some trees, obviously, but I would sway towards benches before trees. We can add the tree. Oh, I think that's something that can be taken in as far as work with that, Ryan, as far as the number that you got here. Um, I'm sure we can incorporate. I think it was promised to the family that there would be a Shirley Patterson bench um, or um, as part of the, the, the deal here. But uh, Councillor Ellis, go ahead. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I think I think we need to leave things as as it is. Like there was a quote out, and there's a company ready to step in and do what we're what we uh, what we had advertised. The benches. I think Deputy Mayor Giroux brought a good point out. Uh, I'm quite sure, uh, given a bit of time, there'll be people maybe step forward to to offer benches. But I think we need to leave things as is the way it was planned, the way it was quoted and get underway with get it, get it done. Okay, so are you making a motion that we go with the recommendation? I'm, I'm going to make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay, moved by Councillor Ellis that we go with the recommendation. Second motion. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Giroux. Councillor Pomeroy, go ahead. We have all these trees where you're going to put the benches. Like okay. They should, should be in place before you, uh, you know, get, get the plan right before you start. Like, yeah, yeah, there's quite an open area there along that pathway, so I'm sure there will be uh, um, a spot for it easy enough. And, uh, um, you know, they've heard from us and we'll get that incorporated in there. So uh, like, the seniors like sitting a lot yeah. better than they do like climbing trees. You know? Yeah. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor and we have a seconder. All in favor of the motion. And that's carried. Okay. All right. So our next uh, item here is uh, restricted acts after after nomination day. Bob? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. So this report uh, recommends that bylaw 2022051, uh, being a bylaw to delegate certain authority to the Chief Administrative Officer Clerk during the municipal election period, as outlined in section 275 of the Municipal Act, be adopted in the bylaw section of today's meeting. So the Municipal Act does outline restricted acts of council, um, commonly known as lame duck period. Um, and it is standard operating procedure that councils do pass this bylaw in order to allow business to continue. Okay. So it's pretty straightforward, something we have to do. So moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by Deputy Mayor Giroux. All in favor, and that's carried. And the last item we have here, and after this item, we'll take a 10 minute recess. But, um, go ahead. Did we miss uh, the um, George Street, number five? No. No, no, we didn't? No. No, that was with regards to the uh, environmental assessment. Okay. Okay. All right. So the last item we have here is Fitchaftery Road and some developing story. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Um, so I have worked with the manager of public works, uh, and I thank him for his uh, input uh, into this report as well. Um, so back in June, a year ago, June, uh, we did bring a report to council which uh, following consultation with the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry uh, provided two options for um, the possibility of taking over Fish Hatchery Road. I have since reached out uh, to the ministry to confirm that those two options still exist. Um, at the time of the original report back in June of 2021, um, council deferred the uh, uh, deferred the matter and suggested that township staff meet with MPP Smith and members of the Fish Hatchery Road Association. Um, on two occasions, we attempted to uh, to establish those meetings and set those meetings up. Unfortunately, due to uh, scheduling at Queens Park and responsibilities at Queens Park, MPP Smith was unable to join us. Um, so, roughly a week, uh, two weeks ago. Uh, 
Mayor Martin and I met with MPP Smith and representatives of the ministry. We had a discussion regarding this matter. Uh, the two options still remain uh, as they were. The administrative fee has gone up approximately $100 uh, since the original report of a year ago. Uh, MPP Smith did uh, commit that there would be no additional costs to the township um, should we assume Fish Hatchery Road under option two. Um, the ministry would assume the costs of the survey and ensure that the survey was completed and there would be no additional costs to the township. Um, costs moving forward for council's consideration. Uh, in the past, we have had engineering reports um, that reviewed and summarized uh, bringing the road up to a standard. Those costs range in between six hundred and eight hundred thousand dollars Those reports are attached to the staff report. So the staff report brings forward for council's consideration the two options available from the ministry for assuming fish hatchery road. This is another item that's been on the go for a long time, and uh, um, those numbers even have changed as far as the 600,000. Um, there's been a lot of work happened over the last few years in there as far as culvert replacement and things like that through the ministry. So I think those numbers are outdated. It's something that we haven't taken lightly over the last little while about dealing with Fish Hatchery Road. It's a unique road in itself, and all of these things suggested by our MPP really help the cause. So um, option two really seems inviting, but I'll open it up to Council. Council Pomeroy, go, Councilor Pomeroy, go ahead. Yeah, I, my first question is, have the people on Fire Road 18 been, you know, have they all got together and uh, do they want it? Because to me, you know, there's only one or two that, that have ever came to council. And the other question that's that's very, very important is funding. You know, like uh, we're going to be looking at, you know, probably a million dollars for to pick up this first part of this, this deal. Is it going to be prorated like uh, we are in Havelock? You know, you're different if you... You get something, you, you prorate it. It has to go back to the people that are using it. Um, secondly, um, MVP Smith, um, I know he's, he, he's been in touch with you. Uh, I hope he's a lot quicker than what he is with, uh, with our long-term care. But, but those, those things that do bother me because first of all, we're only looking at part of the road. And as soon as you, you um, okay the first part of that road down to, I've heard the bridge, two years later, you're gonna have that whole road because you're gonna have to put in a new bridge or to get up to the uh, boat launch and the uh, powerhouse. So there's another million bucks. Um, it's, a, it's a big burden to put on the taxpayer here, the local taxpayer, you know, within the township for to assume all these costs. So has it ever been thought about? Like to the people back there and think that we're just going to give them this and, and uh, so, you know, what, what does it cost now for to upkeep the road? Have we got any costs on that? Yeah, $9,000. Um, if we were going to take it over, that's what the, the um, road super had said to us, what her initial um, operating cost would be $9,000 for winter maintenance. Um, as far as the other things there, this cost here, which I said was outdated, was right to, that was for the whole road. That wasn't just to the bridge. Um, so this is just to the bridge, and, and the MNR understood that, that we don't want the bridge unless it was brought up to a standard, and it's not, it's not there. So um, they still want to keep uh, some, they use it too. So, um, so those numbers, um, 
were the full road and from our staff, some of the costing that's been put out over the last few years, um, these are things that can be implemented in over time through grants. And uh, um, there's no hurry on getting any of this stuff done, especially since the culverts were done this year. Um, so like I say, it's been around ever since I've been on council. Mm -hmm. um, it's a totally uh, different road from any other road in our township. It was public at one time and uh, something happened in amalgamation or in back in the 90s or 80s um, and it needs to be addressed. So um, we, it's another thing we've been working for a long time since for the whole term and we're finally getting somewhere. Um, and, and, you know, area rating was discussed with the group. Um, it's not off the table. That might be something that needs to be looked at. Uh, but this is something to get it moving with the ministry um, at this time. So, um, Deputy Mayor Jarrell, I'll go ahead and then come to you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in regards to this, Peter, if Peter's still on the, on the line, I'd, I have a question for Peter. Good morning again, Peter. In regards to this road, if we do take this on and, uh, and go with the recommendation, I guess, uh, if we did, if we do, what road class will this fall under? I think that's important for council to know. Uh, yes, through you, Mayor Martin, to, to Deputy Mayor Droll, it would be a class five road. Um, there wouldn't be enough traffic on that to make it a class four. As an example, uh, the Seven Flying South, uh, Preston Road, they're class four. So it would be a class five road. Our class six roads would be uh, our limited maintenance, as an example. Okay, so compare this road to Bone Road. Uh, Bowen Road is a limited maintenance road. Um, it gets graded two to three times uh, a season. Uh, the snow gets plowed if we exceed six inches. Um, this road would be maintained um, as like the 11 flying south of uh, Highway 7. It's a gravel road. It gets maintained. Um, it would be maintained the same as the 11 flying. Every time uh, we are out performing winter maintenance, uh, the fish hatchery road would be maintained uh, the same. Thank you, Peter. That's, I needed that clarification. Okay. 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 Councilor Palmer, go ahead. Yeah, excuse me. And, and the difference is uh, we own the uh, property on Bowen Road where we don't own this. And the other question I have for Peter is Did you get any more information from David on? The cost for equipment, um, the whole ball of wax. I think we and we've talked about it before. Did he? Did David come up with something for you? Uh, through you, Mayor Martin, um, uh, David and I have not got back together uh, regarding that matter. I did reach out to uh, Peterborough County um, and their per kilometer uh, on their roads. Um, it is approximately estimated at $12,000 per kilometer year round maintenance. Um, uh, so I would suggest, you know, that would be a high uh, end number. And I know we have a $9,000 on the report. Uh, I think though with the, you know, the, when the report was uh, completed uh, till now with uh, inflation and, and gas and fuel, as everybody's aware, I, I think we'd be, you know, safer up around that uh, uh, Eleven to twelve thousand dollars per kilometer uh, year-round maintenance. Does that bring in depreciation on equipment? Um, maybe I could ask David that question. Or do you know? Do you know Peter? Uh, through you, Mayor. Martin. So, David. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Through um, Mayor Martin, yes, that would take into account the depreciation costs on the equipment. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, Larry, go ahead. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I'd like to ask, um, first of all, I'd like to ask Peter his, his um, evaluation of the present condition of the fish hatchery road. 
Uh, yes, through you, Mayor Martin, to Councillor Ellis, uh, I, I believe uh, I would suggest that for a private road of Fire Route 18, it, it is in very good shape, uh, as in, in some of the other fire roads uh, in the township. Uh, we would, uh, as a township taking the road over, we would definitely require doing uh, some maintenance uh, prior to winter um, to make it, you know, we, we don't want to go down there with one of our three quarter ton trucks. We want to go down there with our tandem when it's out, uh, plowing our main roads. So, uh, yes, uh, taking some corners out, extending some culverts, straightening the road, uh, you know, if we can take some of the, the hills, cut them down, you know, just an as example of, uh, to make it easier for our, our larger plow trucks to, uh, maintain it and uh, be quicker and more efficient and uh, at better maintained, uh, with our tandem plow trucks. Yes. Okay, that's what I was looking for. I think we had the discussion last time we discussed this road that you would go in and do some of the preliminary work to make it um, accessible by your by your large large plow truck. Um, I guess my other comments are only the fact that, as Deputy Mayor Giroux said, at one time it was a municipal road, and for whatever reason it got dumped on the, the cottagers there. Um, and the fact that uh, our MPP Smith has committed that there will be no cost, no cost to the municipality. Um, um, the only cost will be is the assumption of the road. Uh, and I think the mayor uh, has hit the nail on the head. I don't think our cost will be as high uh, as previously uh, stipulated. But um, I think it's time we get on with this. We've talked about it for four years and, and prior uh, councils talked about it as well. Uh, if we're gonna do this, I think it's time to make an, a, a commitment and, and get started at it. And as we've said, do it in, uh, in uh, bits and pieces to bring the road up to the proper standard. So that's my thoughts. Okay. Um, CAO Mangione. Yeah, through you, Mayor Martin, um, to Councillor Ellis, and, and I just want to clarify, I think you did say this, but just to clarify, there will be a cost um, to the township, and it is the administrative fee, which is a little greater than $1,900 um, as of this moment. Um, <laughs> So yeah. there will be a cost plus the maintenance, the ongoing maintenance of the road. Correct. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, you're welcome. So the motion today would be for what I'm hearing is option two. Um, Councillor Palmer, are you feeling up? It's through you, Mr. Mayor. Can you read the option two out to me again, please? Payment of the administrative fee was quoted at $18.83.33 um, plus HST for fiscal year. 2021 and subject to change annually. And I think that has changed a little bit. Um, and then uh, for the price index or policy changes, staff has requested an updated fee amount. And I think that's what you gave us, Bob. Right. It's a little greater than 1900 now. It's gone up approximately $100 since last year. So, um, so if I may expand yeah. for you, Mayor Martin. So option, option two is uh, indicated on page... Uh, Page two of the report. Um, so option two is the title must be transferred uh, to the ministry uh, from government services. Uh, the transfer requires approval from the ministers involved. Um, and the ministry has to make a case for that to happen. This is not the standard operating procedure of what typically happens in these cases. Uh, however, they can, uh, they can make their case. Um, and then there is a consultation with other ministries and agencies as well that is required. Uh, at that point, uh, if no one else has any issues with it, it, it can be transferred to the township. So the first, the first step is the township needs to indicate to the ministry uh, that we are interested in starting the process. Okay, Councilor Pomeroy. Through you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to pros uh, would like to see the process started, but with the intent of who's going to pay for it. You know, it's not fair to the rest of the township for to pay. Yeah, 
you know, so is it going to be area rated? Okay. Um, Aside from that, that, do we um, do we have any clarity in terms of moving forward? What's going on with that bridge? Who owns it? It's M and R bridge. Yeah, I'm just because I can see moving forward with this, right? But I can also see a year or two or this way, looking at that bridge not very long in the future. That's going to be the next thing, right? Because most of the people that they most of the people, a lot of the people that use that road go on past where we're going to be repairing the road, right? To get to Cordova Lake. So, I mean, I'd like to, I have no problem with what we're doing here, but I'd like to have some kind of clarity in terms of whether the ministry or whoever owns that bridge is, you know, is committed to fixing it up when it needs to be done, which is probably a couple of years ago. So, so this doesn't mean it's going to happen. This is a suggestion of um, if we were to move forward with this recommendation, Bob, and hammer out all the extra things as far as uh, um, the costs and all the questions that have been raised here with this, um, that we're in favor, but we still, we could add those questions into the motion as far as the, the bridge and um, the area rating or whatever, if that needs to be, if we have a substantial cost that's going to be going ahead. At this time, we don't see any real huge cost unless you want. Um, I think it's it's a township road uh, if it, if it's assumed. And as far as area rating, we don't area rate any of the other township roads. Um, you know, this would be just done like the rest of them. But it's not out. We can leave that in the motion if you like. Uh, um, okay, Councillor Palmer and Deputy Mayor Grow. Yeah. Well, first off, it's uh, a private road, so. Can't say it's a township. Program. No, I mean if it's the same. Yeah, and uh, you know, if they want to come into the fold, do they come in for nothing? That, so that's why I would like to, you know, see the area reading. Um, I can go up along and starting the protest. There are going to be grants, you know, and uh, the elect seem to think that there's grants for a lot of things here in the future. So. Uh, that's what we'd have to find out and get get the show on you know, on the road because it, as it looks right now, we don't have anybody complaining. Only just yourself and and who else? You know, like we. I think uh, there's lots of people complaining. I've had lots of phone calls, so yeah. but they uh, don't realize that there could be a cost to it. But that's why I'm saying if we if there's grants available. So you, you know where I'm coming from, yeah. because if you take something into the fold, it's not because just a couple of people on council here want, want to take this on as a project. It's, you know, I think it's, uh, there, there's a lot of great, all the rest of the great payers in the, in the township and, are, you know, are going to be, be responsible for this when it's done. So. Yeah. Okay, so um, like it's been said, this has been around forever. Um, and it's a unique road that can be added into the motion. I think Bob, as far as the area rating to open up discussion, like this would go to the province, um, the area rating with the, the owner, uh, the people that are on the road right now can become part of the mix. If it's in the motion there that, uh, um, can it be, or is it just to take this option to as it is. And as far as the area rating, um, we can tell the province that we're looking at, you know, a cost to get into it type of thing from the people that are on the road is what Councillor Palmer is saying here. Um, I don't think it would be totally out of the question to ask for if there was something like, a, I don't know what number it is, I'm not gonna even guess something off the top, but if there was something over, you know, five or 10 year area rate or something like that to get it in the mix, I don't think that would be taken off the I don't think it would take it off the table. It's, 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 is there a way of getting that in the motion to get moving forward, Bob, um, to open up discussion with the people on the road around area rate? So through you, Mayor Martin, um, the matters to be considered by the ministry would be the fact that we want to start the process and the question surrounding the ownership of the bridge and future use of the bridge. That's a question for the ministry. 
as far as area rating goes, that's a township decision. Um, that's a different matter, but we could certainly put it in, in, the, in the resolution that that's how council would consider paying for this okay. matter. Like a, a buy-in type of thing um, at yeah. the start of the process. Okay, Council Webb. So yeah, I was just gonna make a motion then that we move ahead with what we have in the report here, but also ask the ministry for clarification um, some kind of clarification on that bridge in terms of, I don't know about you guys, but I think it replaced five years ago. So I mean, <laughs> you know, and of course they're not gonna know, but I'm just saying it needs to be, it's gonna need to be done within the next 10 years, definitely if not the next five. So I can't see why they couldn't make, maybe not a hard commitment, but at least start the negotiation with us on that. And then I don't know if you're gonna make a separate motion, but I mean, council can, lots of council has to be with the, the area rating. So, I mean, we can, that, but I'll leave my motion at okay what we got in the report here but add to it to the ministry we need uh, clarity on what's being done with the bridge when it's being fixed. Okay. Larry? Yeah and um, I'll second the mo I'll second the motion first of all Mr. Mayor um, and my thoughts where the bridge is a separate issue it's good that it's added in there to draw attention it, to it from the ministry um, and as far as the area rating this this option too, and the motion is to get things moving on. Uh, when we get to the point where we may have to get our wallet out to pay for the maintenance of the road or upgrading the road, that would be a point when the township would discuss area rating. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So you're seconding the motion then? That... Yes, I yes, I am, Mr. Mayor. Okay, and that's the it has the bridge part of it in there. And yeah, the other you through your remark, the other the other portion of the discussion that involves the ministry, I believe, was Council Pomeroy that uh, inquired about grants available. So we will include that in the motion as well. Perfect. Okay. okay. All right. Is there any other comments or questions around it? All right. All in favor of the motion, and that's carried. Okay, thank you. Oh, can okay. I make another motion that we can take a recess? The whole okay, this is just a short one. Okay. But, uh, once this once we get a word back from uh, the government or the ministry, um, I would like to know are we going to area rate? Providing we can't get government grants. I think that'll be a discussion for once we get well, over on the bridge or you know on that topic. So if we're successful on that part, this part should fall. Should be part of the puzzle. So I'm sure it should be brought, you know, to the attention of the people on the road that uh, you know area rate was discussed. Well as it as it stands, it probably won't. Look, there won't be nothing done for quite a while anyway, so it'll be the next council and maybe the one after that. Okay. Through you, Mayor Martin, I, I I can capture the entire discussion in the motion. Uh, area rating will be included in the resolution. Uh, it may not directly involve the ministry, but we'll include it in the resolution. That way we know it was discussed yeah. and everyone understands what okay. the discussion was. Okay. All right. So is that okay with the mover and the seconder? Uh, it's right. okay. With me. It's okay with me, Mr. Um, Mayor. Yep. Okay. All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. I think we did that. But yeah, it, we did. Uh, that's... Now you want another motion? We take. I want a motion for a ten-minute recess. Yep. Um, moved by Barry and seconded by Hart. Um, ten minutes. So we'll be back at. Uh, not very good. So we'll. All right. So I'll take a motion to resume the meeting. Um, moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor, and that's carried. All right, so we're going to move into correspondence here, and we have two action items. Um, the first um, from Donelda Fraser with regard to the under 15 baseball team. Um, they're going, there's been a lot of fundraising going on, and from what I understand, they've reached their goal. Um, I don't know. Uh, doesn't mean we can't help them. It's uh, up to council here. The one thing I had suggested before I seen this, I, I had spoke to staff about 
the uh, HBM pins. I had mentioned it to the baseball if it would be in, if it'd be of any interest, but if they have, I, it's like a hundred or so, but would they be interested in pins to hand out to the other teams for HBM? And I don't know whether it would be of any value to them. Hart, you're more connected there. Yeah, would I don't, that be of any interest? I don't know what any tournaments they really go to. I think it's more this tournament or here. That's what I mean for the Nova Scotia. Yeah. No. Um, another thing that was I've heard thrown out there was maybe um, some kind of a banner or recognition in terms of their championship. I don't know. I imagine they receive some kind of pennant or something down there, but I was saying something maybe we get up made up, put in the rink, you know, 2022. Maybe whatever. something even on the fence out of the diamond, right? Yeah. So I, uh, and then I guess, yeah, they're leaving this weekend, aren't they? Uh, <laughs> but that we, doesn't mean like it. How, could we make a motion to put well, I guess we'll decide on the X number of dollars aside and then have a discussion with baseball about whether they would prefer just the money for the trip or whether whatever idea we end up coming up with, whether it's a banner, pins or whatever. Because as you said, I've also heard that they've reached their goal. It's on the internet and whatnot. So I think if they have enough money to go, you know, so why don't we look for something else? To recognize, to, to recognize what they've, they've accomplished. So. Okay, uh, Councillor Ellis, your hands up there, and then Councillor Pomeroy. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I think as uh, Councillor Webb has indicated there, I'm, I'm quite sure they've reached their goal. Unfortunately, we didn't have a council meeting prior to where we could have done uh, the funding part of it. But by all means, this, this group needs to be recognized uh, by our municipality here. <clears throat> Maybe, maybe through Sports and Rec, we can come up with a, an idea that uh, really highlights and recognizes their achievement. Um, so I would leave it at that, but just I just want to make sure they're recognized in a, in a big way because uh, uh, it's one of those things uh, that has really sparked our municipality, uh, the pulling together. Um, and so it's just, Nice to recognize that thing when it happens, and then, and unfortunately, the other thing in our municipality that has brought people together is a disaster of the the fire on George Street, and it's brought people together. So our municipality can do it; they they can pull together. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, it has to be a disaster, or in this case, something really great that has happened. So. By all means, we need to recognize them in whatever way we can. Okay, um, Council Pomeroy, go ahead. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, probably to Hart can answer this question. Have you had any idea on what how much money they've raised? I thought the number I saw on the internet was fourteen thousand. Yeah. So, which was about. So they they've raised enough for. Their goal when I when I when, when they started was around that. That's good because I was going to say, well, I can open up my mind there to that council initiative thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, you know because it, it's it's something that our municipalities um, should be very very proud of. Um, I, I don't know. Like I've heard a couple of things, banners. And, you know, banners are better than having pens for to give kids because you know, they're yeah. good. Yeah, you can see it, you right? know, and, and you can see it. So the timing here, um, spending money. It, this I'm, <laughs> I don't know how it works after the nineteenth, but uh, well, um, this is it. We got to So is there a way of putting an upset limit here again? Um, to uh, or do we have to worry about this? This is something for the community. Um, we have the council initiatives there that was already budgeted for. Um, if we see fit to uh, gather some information on what would be the most effective to recognize them. We have a lot of up and comers coming. I was out last night to the under nine group that won a tournament on the weekend doing the fire truck thing and they were in pouring rain riding around town, the happiest could be. Um, when they see this kind of thing happening for their older, the older teams, it might give them more initiative to to keep moving, it's, it's it's good to recognize. So 
What's your thoughts here, Bob? Yeah, through you, Mayor Martin. So a couple things. Uh, number one, if they want an item to take with them, the pins is probably a good idea. And on your way out today, we can get pins if you want. I believe we have lots of them. Um, as far as the banner, the banner is more of a recognition here in town that we will keep here. So that's a different item. Um, and I believe we probably have room in our budget currently. And so that's not affected by lame duck at all. So we could get some costing on that or maybe make a decision on what you would like to do first and then bring it back to council and we can certainly uh, cost and that. that. That might be the best way is yeah. that we do want to recognize them and just bring something back that would, like, I think you're right, the, the banner or something posted even on the fence over at the ball diamond or on the building or whatever, something to recognize them, you know, for a few years probably would be more effective than the pins. The pins were just a, a quick thought. Um, so, yeah, so as long as we can do it, once we gather some more information that we will recognize them in some way and uh, um, we'll talk to the group and see which which they would prefer the most. And, um, okay, so Council Pomeroy, go ahead. Yeah, I am uh, on the U15 ball team when they came back to Havelock and they had a little map down at the park or something. I was kind of disappointed that, you know, council wasn't notified because I heard that, well, I stopped seeing Hart because I heard the day before on the Sunday or whatever it was that it, it was going to ride around. So I went downtown while it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. I saw the hardware there the following day and talked to Hart and he said, well, he thought it was tonight. Yeah. I said he'd been talking to you. So. I thought, well, I'll wait for a call. And I never got one. And I don't know whether the rest of council did or not, but I, oh, I just heard about it late too. Same as the one last night. I just read it online and came over. Just to, yeah, that would be on me. I didn't get that call till probably later Sunday yeah. night. So I tried yeah. I got it's on not, it. It's not I got it's on. Not. I got on. Apologize. <laughs> um sorry, Jim, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I got that call late last night and I apologize because I had other things going on and I I got to Bob. I did make a phone call to Bob after I'd already visited him and forgot to tell him around lunch. <laughs> so I got back to him at two yesterday. So I will take the blame for the rest of council not knowing about that. I apologize. So Yeah, but the, the first one, I didn't know until about half an hour before. So. Okay, yeah. I'll let you off the hook. Then. Yeah, I, I would, I I would let you know. Your, your job. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting it secondhand too, so it's throw them this way. Um, throw the stove this way. Yeah, I'm not getting. Yeah, I'm not in that loop, but uh, you are the loop. Yeah, but I didn't get any calls about it. So but anyway, throw the pins at him. Yeah. Okay, Larry, go ahead. Yeah, getting back to uh, what we were discussing here, um, I know there was uh, a couple of ladies that were. Uh, the kind of main uh, organizers for uh, gathering the funds. I'm wondering if it would still be a good idea to touch base with them. The money that they have raised, is that just to cover travel, accommodation, um, and maybe food, but maybe there's still an opportunity there to support them financially uh, if we knew that information. So how was the, what motion did you have? Like, I guess basically your motion is leaving it open that you're going to talk. Yeah, to yeah. So, yeah. And if they, if they, they might, as to Councillor Ellis's point, they might say, yeah, we need, we still need a couple thousand dollars, right? So then they could just take whatever amount we decide to donate. And if they tell us that they think that they've got enough money for the trip, then they said we can propose that we have a few ideas to uh, recognize their accomplishment here in the municipality, whether it be whatever the things we've discussed, banner, trophy, whatever. So we're not handcuffed by our CAO, the way our CAO talks. So I think it's something to come back to the next meeting. If in between now and then we can find out, you know, the best way to help them or would that work? And Deputy Mayor Drogo, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so you were spending your money, your money's gone. But if you have a banner, it's there for a long time. Speak. Yep. So, okay. So we'll... You want to so the motion, yeah, that motion. Yeah. moved by Councilor uh, Councilor Webb and seconded mm -hmm. by what what's the motion? Please. The motion is to uh, contact the 
like baseball and well actually yeah we didn't decide on the amount either no that's so if you want to decide on the amount but anyways the motion would be contact them say we have this amount would you like it the, the cash money to use to pay for expenses for their trip or would you rather if they've reached their limit have us uh you know purchase something to recognize their accomplishment in some way well first of all if they preach their their goal for trip and expenses um i think we're just if you gave them more money they're going to spend it anyway but um, I'm kind of along the I'm, same same lines, but if, you know, like because I said, uh, what twelve twelve thousand dollars was an upset figure before, and if they got fourteen, they're already over. So uh, the deputy mayor Jarrow has said there, you know, like something that lasts and and stays in the community, and and uh, um, I don't know what it would cost, but when when did they go? This weekend. This weekend. <laughs> so so we leave it with an upset limit up from council initiative, still up to a thousand dollars to uh um look at a some way of recognizing yep. their achievement. Yep, I make a motion to that effect. Yeah. Councils or yeah, so Barry's doing it from council yeah, initiatives. He's sure. trending or yeah. well, uh, okay, I'll second. No, no, no I'll second. Second. whatever you're saying, that's fine. Mark seconding. I'll second Barry's motion. Any other comments around it? All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. Okay, our next uh, item here is the County Plowmen's Association request for sponsorship. We've done that in the past. Uh, What's the? Not that I was looking for the number. There is two hundred dollars. Is yeah, there a number on this? I don't think didn't have the number in it, but we have done it. Like, and I think yeah. you're right. It was like two hundred bucks. Or I'm not sure the number. I will make the motion. Um, I'm not. It probably takes some time for Bob to go back. I thought it was either 150 or 200 dollars. I'll say 200 dollars. Yeah. Um, Sorry, do you want to just say the same amount as previous? Yeah. Yes, that'd be that fine. Okay? Same right. amount as previous. I think that 200 sounds right. Yes, it's done up for Bob. I've had the uh, competitors trophy sitting in my home for. Almost three years now, so we'll be glad to uh, <laughs> turn it over to somebody else. Because of COVID, we haven't had the uh, Rio County time much. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the motion is that we um, up to two hundred dollars uh, to support the plowing match. That's moved by Deputy Mayor Drew and seconded by King. Councilor Pomeroy. Yep. All in favor? And that's carried. And we had some information items here for uh, um, the voter lookout mail is something important that we need to tell people to get out and make sure that they're on the voters list. And uh, um, the Peterborough County uh, Transportation Master Plan, I had a meeting for that yesterday. It's moving along and almost complete. It was a huge task. Um, but anyway, we're getting there. So, um, Motion to receive the correspondence for information. Motion to receive, Mr. Mayor. Moved by Councillor Ellis and seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor? Carried. And then we'll move into activity reports. Um, we did have the county uh, meeting last week. Dave, I don't know whether you had anything. I don't have anything retained that directly. Uh, was directed towards our municipality. There was a couple of uh, couple of items, I guess, that pertain to all of the county. That's for sure. But uh, I don't have any one in particular. Okay, and I'm going to have to get into the swing of things. I have a few things on my desk at home, but uh, uh, anyways, I'll do better next time. So, anyways, uh, okay. So, in the um, activity reports here, we have. Uh, Service board meeting on July 27th and minutes from the April 26th. Um, the meeting on the 27th was a lot around Black Cat reporting and hoping to get a, a I guess, a social media friendly uh, report from OPP that we can post the uh, um, Black Cat information because it was pretty interesting, some of the stuff that came out of it. But um, it can be hard to read, I thought. It, they said it was easy, but I think it's. It's a little better way to present it, but uh, 
anyways, that'll be coming forward here soon, Bob, I think, for from this last meeting. But the minutes from the 20 April 26th meeting, uh, if there's any, I look for a motion to receive those minutes. Um, okay, M moved by Councillor Webb and Larry. I'll second the motion with a question there, Mr. Mayor. Sure. Um, I wasn't able to uh, attend the last three services. I was interested in the Black Cat reports, and I was wondering if you could just give us a short version of Black Cat pertaining to uh, maybe a couple of our roads, uh, mainly the six line where we've been getting major complaints, uh, what the Black Cat told them. Yeah, I don't have that with me here today, Larry. That'll come with the minutes of the uh, of the next, or maybe before then. Um, it all of them weren't as bad as like always. There, there's there's a few times that there seems to be some speeding, but for the most part, they're all with not as bad as you think. Um, I don't know, Bob. Do you remember anything? Yeah, I, I remember it the same way, Mayor Martin. Uh, there didn't seem to be any serious issues that were flagged um, at that meeting? Certain times, Sundays or uh, um, Fridays, you might see that like it goes, it breaks it down into hours of the day, like right down to every hour. And so you do see a pattern on weekends and things like that. Um, and it does help them to go out and monitor those times of the days or week. Um, and that's what they're focusing on with them. But um, like most reports, it was it's pretty, they did uh, Highway 7 in two places, and it was pretty obvious. Uh, the one that was out at Mary Street, you could see they were on the one lane. They were coming into town, obviously, over speed, uh, speeding. Um, by the time they got to the Williams Street uh, Black Cat, they were all pretty well within, within a allowable speed. Um, but there's obviously the odd spike that you see at maybe five o'clock in the morning or, you know, 11 o'clock at night, you'll see different things. And that's what's good about these things. There's something you can spend a lot of time in reading and I'll, I'll make sure you get a copy of the one from George or uh, the six line and you can see how it works there, Larry. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so motion to receive the minutes from the April 26th meeting. Moved by by Councillor Ellis. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay. Next, we'll move into new business. A few things in there. Um, Deputy Mayor Duro, go ahead. Um, it's for CEO um, Seagull Housing Corporation property. Have we had any uh, further, have they had any further contact with them? The only development there, uh, through you, Mayor Martin, and perhaps you can uh, expand upon this, is there is a new person um, in charge of that organization now. So we do have a new person to work with um, for the next year and a half, I believe. Um, and I believe you've had discussion with her. Um, so maybe Mayor Martin can expand upon that. Yeah, and I haven't talked to her personally, but uh, we had a bit of an email thing going. I was trying to find out the same thing. And uh, um, finally, there's an interim CEO at Peterborough um, Housing, and a lot of the concerns that I had, she seemed to agree with them as far as the lists and things that are going on there. We didn't get into the uh, um, the quad units yet. Um, like I say, I just got this on Friday, and uh, finally have a name to work with, and and she seemed pretty receptive to talk. Uh, some of the things that I brought up to her were a list. There, see, there seems to be a lack of a list. And that's one of her things on her that she's going to address here in the next little while is developing a list that, uh, that we used to have. And the other one was that I did make her aware that a senior is building and she's good with that. Uh, that nothing has changed. Um, there's just a lot going on. and. Uh, like I say, maybe we can invite her uh, in the future here. Um, I'll talk to her here over the next week or so, and maybe we can get something where we can put a face to the name. Uh, uh, but yeah, I just got the email on Friday afternoon and uh, um, actually did call a constituent that was looking at the units there and uh, um, 
told her I would get more information for her once this list is developed. So, okay. Okay, there's lots going on up there. As you know, we have our agreement that we got to make sure we look after. Okay, thank you for that, Mayor. Um, we think the long term care, I think Bob has some. Pretty good news to yeah, we, we through you, Mayor Martin, we, we have a little bit of progress to report. We do now have a contact person uh, at the ministry who uh, will be coordinating the project here in Havelock. Um, I have reached out. Um, we are awaiting a response, but I have reached out, introduced staff uh, to this individual and uh, indicated that we would like an update as to how the project will progress. Um, so we expect a, a response soon to that. Okay. Thank you for that, uh, Bob. And then uh, number three was uh, just kind of an update. I'm not sure on whose premise this falls under, but Cosh Lake Dock, I don't think there's anything done with it. And uh, I don't think there was any directive given to do anything about that, other than the fact that I think I made a motion for the dock to be, or amount of money, I think it was $1,500 for the dock, but as it's, I guess we're still in limbo. So not sure, maybe Ryan could help scale that. Yeah, uh, so through Mayor Martin to Deputy Mayor Giro, I can give you a bit of an update on the on the dock situation. Uh, as Council may recall, uh, during the April 5th uh, budget meeting, uh, Council approved the donation of $4,000 uh, for the replacement of the dock at Kashbog Lake. So uh, I recently was in contact with uh, Terry Reese. Uh, he's kind of heading up this project uh, on behalf of on behalf of the Lake Association. And uh, he anticipates that uh, we're going to do the, well, he's going to be ready to, to uh, replace the dock in the next two weeks. So uh, that should be completed by the end of the summer here, by the end of August. That's what it sounded like. Well, thanks a lot for that, Ryan, for that update. And I guess I was more, uh, more uh, generous, but generous than I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Ryan. Really appreciate that. Uh, number four, couldn't have fit in any better today. Uh, so that was here, did a great presentation. So we can take that off the list. Number five, I think, is a, is a good news story for not only the, the municipality, but for our council. Um, on July the 13th, um, Bob, Peter, myself, and David Bond, Brad Robinson, Jordan Easton from, you know, is there a water guy here? And uh, Karen uh, Barnett. She's new to Aqua here. This, this was a meeting with Aqua and of course, Amber Coffin. Um, so if we want to go backwards a couple of years, uh, Councilor Palmer Ray and, my, well, and myself were involved in an ozone treatment uh, pilot project over at well number three. It worked, but in the end, uh, it was a lot of money. It was well over, well over a million dollars. And in the end, Aqua didn't think that was for, for our size of municipality, it, it wasn't really feasible because of the ongoing chemicals and so on. Anyway, that was that. So uh, Peter did uh, a lot of work for council to find out the costing of a new well, uh, which was approximately the same price as the original treatment. So in, uh, Aqua's never quit uh, trying to come up with a solution for the Goody Well. Um, so lo and behold, uh, we may save a million dollars here. Um, the water treatment at well is uh, we've started a feasibility assessment and a pilot project uh, with the blessing of the uh, ministry and uh, um, I'm losing my train of thought here. Peter, if you come on and help me out here. Um, the pilot project has already started. And uh, perhaps Peter can take over from there. <laughs> yes, through you, Mayor Martin, to Deputy Mayor Jero. Uh Yes, the, the pilot project. Um, so Aqua has... Uh, um, consulted with cambium and uh they had the water tested that they and they have the results back and they have started the pilot project on july 20th 
uh, this year. Um, uh, the pilot uh, project will run for six months. Uh, it's, an, it's a cost of uh, $1,000 for the permit through the, the ministry, uh, plus the chemicals. Um, so it's a potassium permanganate, uh, which is injected into the water um, to, uh, to clarify the, the color. Um, so as of right now, um, they are using some spare equipment that they have on hand at, uh, at the well three. Uh, so the cost is very minimal at this point, um, which is very good. Uh, we do have results back from uh, from the operators through Aqua that uh, it's it's looking very good at this point. Uh, still early in the project. Um, uh, further to that, uh, the ministry and Aqua Aqua could possibly uh, approve this to be put into use in uh, in mid September. Um, the outline total uh, cost uh, they've estimated between fifty and sixty thousand dollars to have this. Uh, um, permanently put in place in the well um it's just the it's like i say they're using some spare equipment that they have on hand and pumps and and uh, injection ports um but uh, if it uh, pans out as the way it's projected and it's looking um they're looking at uh, putting it in permanently it could be between 50 and 60 thousand dollars and the problem uh would be resolved uh with the well three so it's it's looking very very positive Yep. Thank you for that, Peter. Uh, yeah, I don't know about the rest of the council, but for what we've been through over there for the last 10 years or more than that, this is almost too good to be true, so I hope it is. And uh, yeah, it's, I'm excited about it. There is a, I will add, there is another <coughs> uh, municipality um, in Ontario um, that is about our size that has been doing this. They went through the same pilot project and they've been on long and I forget how, how, how long they've been using it, uh, but uh, through Amber and the, the rest of our crew that, uh, yeah, it's it's working. Okay, that's great. That's my end of my report. Okay. Um, so we'll move over to Thanks, Peter. Councillor Ellis. Uh, you had a few questions here. Um, Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, and I don't have my. So the first have, one. Uh, the, okay, your first question was the dotted line painting in the area of Weber, right. Weber Road. Right. So, if you're traveling east on Number Seven, leaving Havelock, um, at the area where the 70 kilometer zone indicating sign is. It becomes a dotted line, which comes into a curve leaving the village. Uh, over the last few years, um, I've had different ones approach me or tell me uh, of close calls in that area where people are, are passing, they feel that the curve shouldn't have a dotted line there. I, I actually thought it was the next curve down uh, past the motel, uh, but a month ago now, I happened to be coming into the village, heading west, a car coming out. I call it Weber Road or Weller Road. Um, went to turn on to Highway 7 and somebody started to pass. So what I'm, what I'm indicating here is that that section should be a double line extended out further because when people have come through the village, uh, they've had to slow down. Now they're leaving and they go like a bat out of, you know what? And um, again, over the course of the last few years, I've had different ones say about getting pushed off the road, uh, almost had an accident and so on. So uh, I'm, I guess what I'm asking is uh, for council's support. And we would ask our CAO to invite the necessary people to a council meeting to discuss this. Uh, and to add to this, uh, about four years ago, we had asked to have a double line painted in the area of Sama Park and the second line because of the amount of traffic on and off there. We talked about turning lanes, but also a, dot, a, a double line to prevent passing in that section. Um, so I'll open it up to council for their thoughts, but if I hadn't seen it myself, I would have probably not picked up on the actual location. 
So, so maybe to move forward on this, Councilor Ellis, we would uh, invite MTO because I think we have a number of questions. You brought up a good point about the turning lanes. I thought all that was happening this summer, but uh, um, nothing seems to be. I see a lot of survey lines and stuff on there, so maybe they're doing it in the fall. But uh, I wonder if there would be any way of getting them to come in and uh, um, ask. We could probably develop quite a list. Um, it starts with our regular meeting about the stoplights at the east end of town. Um, right you know, where they're at with that. Um, there was some things that they were looking at at one time and they've never done that. So maybe it would be a time to invite MTO to a meeting and uh, um, that would be, you could actually well, to, speed I, this, to speed this one up though, Larry, I'm just wondering if Peter should be contacting the MTO because um, to I, get, get it moving. I did talk to Peter about it. Um, like I say about, a, I guess it's at least a month ago now when, when I seen the, the fatality almost happened there um but yeah i would i would make a motion that we invite mto and uh, create a list create the list so that when when we get them here we have our our uh, list to talk to them about okay um yeah yeah ahead. through you mayor martin um just to inform council uh the manager of public works and i have reached out to the ministry regarding this issue We've invited them to a site visit to see the actual location uh, of the road. Uh, we can certainly expand that to include an invitation to a council meeting. Good. Perfect. So, so that's moved by Councillor Ellis that we invite them and uh, uh, to a future meeting here. And do you have a seconder for that? MTO? Um, yeah, I have a question. Okay, Councillor Palmer, you're seconding it with a question? Yeah, well, maybe not a question, but on Sunday, there was a van out from the MTO. Um, I forget what it said on it. They're studying traffic there anyway. Yeah, I seen them putting the rubber down. So, yeah. Um, okay, so we do have a seconder for that motion. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, your next item was Havelock, Balma, Methuen signage at the medical center. Yeah, we still, we just still have some uh, M, uh, HBM signage up there that uh, indicates that we're. Uh, still an ownership of a drilling or whatever. So I think that could be removed now. So, so give that to Peter. That Has that closed? No, through you, Mayor Martin, uh, that that uh, real estate transaction closes on Friday um, and we will certainly work. I've communicated with Dr. Grover and we will work to remove the sign. Very good, thank you. Thank you, Bob and Peter. Next one is uh, Round Lake. Round Lake yeah, Road shoulder. Uh, yeah. Yes. So um, I had some discussions with a couple of people on uh, on the condition of Round Lake Road. And the long and the short of it is uh, their comments are it's a gorgeous road, uh, but they have concerns about the shoulders and losing the good road that we have created. I did talk to Peter uh, and went and we reviewed the road. And if Peter's still there, I'll let Peter comment on uh, the, there's some areas that are what we call short shoulders and we were afraid um, that with, with rains and so on that the shoulder that's there gets deteriorated to the point where you could start and lose the good paved road we have as well as the concern was the next section of uh, that round lake road uh, making sure that uh, the shoulders are are uh, not short shoulders in any area so I'll let Peter comment if he would, please. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, to Councillor Ellis. Yes, uh, Councillor Ellis, we did go and have a look and viewed some of the uh, the shoulders that uh, don't really make the width that we were um, intentionally planning on. Uh, we'd like to see three feet or a meter width out from the edge of the asphalt to support the edge of the asphalt and also so it doesn't uh, drain, wash away, erode. Uh, our new asphalt. So there is a, a few spots that we have noticed there on the uh, the new section of asphalt that uh, was reconstructed last year. Uh, they will be addressed here when we uh, proceed on uh, the remaining end of Round Lake Road from uh, the seventh line north there to the sixth line. Uh, and then and as well, we will make sure that the, the, the shoulders do meet uh, a three foot um, shoulder on the new section as well so that'll create uh, some walking uh, uh people for to get off the pavement uh, as vehicles pass for the for the pedestrians that are walking as well so 
uh, yes, and and why that uh, became an issue, uh, Councillor Ellis. Um, we'll we'll have a closer uh, closer investigation on it. Uh, if we have to lengthen some culverts, uh, might have been uh, some of the reason why uh, the staff didn't uh, didn't reach that three foot uh, shoulder width on the on the road that was uh, constructed last year. Okay, thank you, Peter. Thank you. Uh, the last one is uh, the agreement with our Lions Club. Um, I don't know about the rest of council, but periodically I get um, questioned why there hasn't been a resolve with the um, the lease, um, why we haven't seen certain documents. Um, so I'm suggesting that there is a new president of Lions Club that we could uh, invite them to a, a a meeting and so we can discuss it. Bob? Yeah, through you, uh, Mayor Martin, I have reached out to the Lions Club. Um, they will be meeting later this month uh, to provide feedback uh, with respect to the agreement, the proposal that we put forward. And that addresses the request as well, Bob? We, the request to attend a council meeting? Yes, we will remind them of that request. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's uh, that's all I had. I'm just actually kind one, of getting sick. You had one other Sorry, one there about update reports on major projects. Yeah, well, there's, we do, well, a lot of it's been addressed today with this council mm -hmm. meeting through, uh, Let um, gave a great supporting um, report there. It was a very interesting one. Unfortunately, I, my uh, <laughs> cell phone died because it got too hot. So I didn't hear the end of it, but uh, that report from Let was very entertaining, very encouraging and uh, and very well done. So it kind of gave uh, a lot of the information that that uh, I was looking for in regards to the to the major projects that uh, that we have underway. So that that was answered in the Let report. Thanks. Okay. All right then. And the last item here on uh, new business was uh, the success of the clear bag program. And and I think it's well, it's been mentioned at the county, and I think Peter had some numbers there on uh, uh, waste diversion. It's been really going well, and and uh, I just wondered if at some time we would be taking it to the next step, where um, a lot of municipalities are doing random checks more often looking in the clear bags and seeing if we could do even better um, as they enter the uh, transfer stations. And it's really been rewarding for them as far as uh, um, diverting extra things that maybe people don't realize are, are uh, recyclable. And that was the whole idea around the uh, clear bag is that you could see what's in there. So I just wondered if there was a, Peter, you had a number there. Oh, there it is there. Um, yeah, it's going really well, and maybe uh, maybe we could step it up another notch, and uh, um, this, all the uh, transfer stations could, you know, kind of take a look and see if we could even do better, um, and maybe bring a report back to us in a month or two to see what they're finding in the bags and if there is a way of uh, um, diverting more um, recycles and and our waste recyclables from the waste. So. Um, I don't know what council's thoughts on that are, but uh, um, it would have to be a buy-in from the transfer station attendants to uh, to do this, but uh, I think there is an opportunity to do better. So, uh, Deputy Mayor Drill, go ahead. Well, I don't disagree with you. I don't think we should be going through people's garbage no. at time, but uh, <laughs> that being said, I think education, once again, I, I, I you got to keep telling people and telling people this can go in the clear bag and this is only what's in without the education part. Um, you don't really have a leg to stand, stand on. We all should know what goes in the clear bags. You know, on the last trip down there, I see half a dozen black bags in there. That's something that should be addressed too. So, yeah. So, but if we I'm not sure at one time whether it was the county or our municipality. I believe it was the county that, that had a sticker you could put on your fridge or it was just a little cardboard thing. And uh, I think I still got one in my fridge that 
separated what's in recycle boxes, what goes in the recycle, what goes in the clear bags, and so on. But it's still education. Yeah, so maybe we can look good, but we can do better. Maybe we could look for that to see if there's even a thing that we could post at the transfer stations that you know that it's working and let's keep 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 pushing forward on it, I guess. So uh, maybe there is some literature out there already that from the county or something like Peter just posted now. Maybe we could uh, share that at the transfer stations on some sort of a poster or something. Larry, go ahead. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, th that was the advantage is the clear bag. You don't have to go digging through somebody's garbage, no. but you do have to look. You do have to look and you can see items that are in there. Um, the other thing I think we need to maybe focus a bit more on is asking for your to show your dump card because from what I understand, we do have some neighboring municipalities that are using our our transfer stations. Okay. Well, for now we we can focus on the clear bag. Uh, you know, maybe we can look into seeing if there's some educational material that we could put out there to help uh, keep it moving forward and and let people know that it is working. Uh, I've been telling everybody at all the uh, um, lake associations on that's part of the thing on waste and and the clear bag and um, been telling everyone that it's been going good. But uh, we need to keep it keep it moving and. Uh, uh, see what we can do. So I'll just leave it at that, Bob. I won't get a motion or anything. We'll just uh, you can let staff know that we're yep. trying to trying to keep expanding on the on the education side of it. And that's all I have in new business. Uh, Barry, go ahead. Now I have just a couple of reminders here. The uh, plaque that uh, Brian Stillman has for the death up at the corner. All oh, right. Yeah. He uh, he showed me the plaque and. Uh, I mentioned it to Peter, and I don't know that he's finalized a, a place for it. On it's on the opposite side of the road because we didn't want it all broke up with our winter equipment. So maybe I can ask Peter if he's found a suitable place. Are you still there, Peter? Uh, yes, through you, Mayor Martin, uh, to Councillor Pomeroy. Um, uh, uh, Bob and myself reached out to uh, uh, Mr. Stillman and uh, we are waiting to hear back. Uh, I expected a call today or tomorrow um, and we do have a location on the, I'll call it the Tim Hortons uh, corner uh, beside a bench that is uh, already in place there and it's, it, the plaque would fit very nicely on the right beside that bench on the, on the, in the pavement um, on the slope up to the lawn of the Tim Hortons uh, so uh, uh, we were waiting to hear back with uh, from Mr. Stillman, and then uh, then we can go ahead with that uh, if uh, council wishes. Yeah, because he he stopped outside here one day when we were talking, and and uh, he has the plaque. He wanted to know if I wanted it. I said no. I said Peter will get it when he when he has the appropriate place for it. So I guess we just have to just make a motion at council for. I would imagine for to install the black. Yeah. So we can get that now if you like. Uh, if Peter staff has its location, yep. so yep. motion to install the, okay. the black. All right. Moved by Councillor Pomeroy and seconded by Councillor Webb that uh, Peter has found a location and the plaque will be installed. So did you pick up the black, Peter, or is he still the heaven? Uh, through you, Mayor Martin, no, uh, he still has the plaque at this point, Councillor Palmer. Right? Okay, because I, he wanted to give it to me, but I said, no, I said, you keep it at home until uh, we get a location. And you could pick it up. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep, yep. Okay. All right, then. All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. So, um, so next, we're going to move into bylaws. And our first bylaw here is uh, a by a merger agreement with the Bono, um, Roger Bono. So moved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Jarrell, seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor? And that's carried. The next one is the second merger agreement with uh, Roger Bono for this property. Um, so moved, Mr. Mayor. Moved by Councillor Ellis, seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor? Carried. The next is to authorize MCON for the winter maintenance. Uh, I think Councilor Pomeroy is moving that. And 
Councilor Webb is seconding it. All in favor? And that's carried. And the next one is to authorize our CAO. Just read that temporary delegation of authority, Bob. <laughs> Just make sure you highlight that part of it. <laughs> Councilor, Councilor Bomberai and seconder, Councilor Ellis, all in favor. And that's carried. And the last bylaw here is the confirming bylaw. <clears throat> so I'll look for a motion for the confirming bylaw, and that's moved by Councilor Webb and seconded by Deputy Mayor Duro. All in favor? And that's carried. And the last thing we have here is adjournment. And I want to say it's been a great meeting as far as all the all the projects that we got moving forward. Uh, um, I think it was really productive. So thank you. So motion to adjourn is moved by Councilor Pomeroy. And it's seconded by Councillor Ellis. All in favor? That's